We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must complete a decision request form. These forms are available at the hearing room, at the doors, and at the end of the horseshoe. Please ensure that you include your email address on the form because the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. Once completed, please give the card to a staff member seated to my right. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, also known as TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. To ensure a fair and timely hearing, I will vet the agenda to determine which applications can be dealt with immediately and which applications have individuals other than the applicant or agent who wish to address the committee. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda and will ask for individuals to identify themselves. If there are people in interest, the matter will be held until all other non-contested items have been dealt with. If your item is held, we strongly encourage the applicant or agent to meet with the interested parties outside the hearing room to discuss and or resolve concerns or issues. If no person is present in interest, the item will be called in the order listed on the agenda for non-contested applications. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with his or her presentation if required, and the committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. When uh, each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee, and I will comment when you're reaching the five-minute mark. When addressing the committee, please come forward to the podium, clearly state your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. If you have a written submission that you read from, please hand it to the Deputy Secretary Treasurer when you are done. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee of the application. And please note that the committee may not entertain extensive revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application, if substantially revised, to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. If there are several speakers sharing the same view, please select a spokesperson to present the group's opinion. We want to hear your views, however, covering the same points is not required, nor will it advance your cause. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker, and when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussions. The application will then be taken into committee for a decision. Panel members and staff, are there any declarations of interest for the uh, afternoon? No. No? Okay, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, are there any files to be closed in the afternoon slot? Uh, no, there are not. Okay, are there any applicants present who wish to withdraw their application? Okay, are there any applicants present who wish to defer their applications? Okay, now I did vet the agenda um, earlier. I'm not sure if there's anybody who arrived late um, who is here in opposition. I'll just quickly read the uh, street numbers because the agents, except for one, I think, already identified themselves. So are there any people in opposition to 266 Havelock Street? 141 First Avenue? 
Okay, is the applicant for 155 Merchants Wharf here now? Okay, is there anyone in opposition for that? Okay, are there any people in opposition to 40, 49 Burnside Drive? Yes? Okay, where's the applicant for Burnside? You've got somebody who's, I don't know if you had a chance to speak, but perhaps you can go on, speak to the item, we're holding it down. Is there anybody here in opposition to 178 Rhodes Avenue? 165 Geary? Anyone in opposition to 98 Glen Albert Drive? To Dingwall Avenue? You're in opposition? Okay, where's the, where's the applicant for Dingwall? Okay, you've got two people in opposition. If you can have a conversation outside the room, we'll hold it down. 1630 Bloor Street West. Anyone? Sorry? You're in, where's the applicant for? Okay, so you, you've already had a conversation. So I don't need to hold it. Uh, is is your opposition speaking? Okay, so we will hold it down then, sir. Okay, item number 30, 98 Hazel Hazelton Avenue. Anyone in opposition here? Okay, so the items being held are number 24, 49 Burnside, 28, 2 Dingwall Avenue, and 29, 1630 Bloor Street West. Okay, so we will start with item number 21, 266 Havelock Street. Okay, while you make your way up here, panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, correspondence from George Taxidis, the agent, and a staff report from Tree Protection. Can we have your name, please, sir? Uh, George Taxidis. I'm the agent for 266. Okay. Panel Avenue. members, do you need a presentation, or can we go straight to questions? questions. Okay. Any presentation. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> go ahead. So can you explain about the um, basement walkout? <clears throat> that's the front, and uh, what's the impact that's having with the your landscape. Um, with regards to the front, we, uh, we, we have been in communication with, I know there was some, uh, some concerns from community planning and we did have some communications and they seem to be okay with what we submitted. If I can, can I submit these as a, as a supplement? Sorry, what is it? It's an email, it's communications with uh, city planning, uh, one of the planners there and we had submitted some, we had further communications after they had um, I had some concerns, they raised some concerns and we, we... Okay, so this is after the other, the exchange on yes. September and August. Okay, yep. sure. sure. Okay. Thank you. So this is the updated site plan here? Uh, yes. Can you briefly tell us what, what you've Yes, it's, it's actually just a, a little bit more detail to the existing site plan. Um, what we did was, uh, what the, the impact would be, by adding the, the basement walkout, what we did was we shortened the, the existing porch to make it a little, to give it, so it doesn't take up very much more room with regards to, uh, you know, we had to uh, build a path from the main walk to the, to the, to the, um, uh, to the walkout, so that I guess would take some some initials of the some of the original um, landscaping, but for the most part, it's it's it somewhat stays the same. The, uh, the the house itself is quite close to the to the prop line with the with the porch, so we're just trying to minimize as much and keep as much of the front yard landscaping as possible. The, the existing, which one are we talking about? At the front next to the tree, the big tree. Uh, no, that one's staying there. That one's remaining because that's existing to the, 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 uh, the porch itself is, is, we're just shortening it. We're, we're making it a little shorter so the stairs would remain in the same place because that's where the door is. So we're leaving the path there. And the part that goes north to the walkway is what, what is new. So does that affect then uh, any of the variances? Variance five for front yard landscaping? Uh, 
It does not, no, not from the original, not from the original report. Any other questions? And uh, uh, is this typical, like uh, in this street, in this area, are there other examples where there is? Uh, there are a few, uh, I can give you the address, but there are a few houses right on that street and, and parallel streets, but the ones that we, I took some, an inventory of the ones on the street if you wanna, if you want them. Do, would you like them? Um, which one? The, the inventory of well, I didn't take any pictures. I have the addresses, though, if, if you'd like to, if you want those. What, what's that, sir? Yes, maybe you can just put it on the overhead so we can see the one addresses. Are, they're not plotted. Oh, okay. I don't have any pictures, but I do okay, have so the address. Tell us the addresses, then. I wouldn't mind knowing how many. Uh, the addresses are, sorry, uh, 248 Havelock Street, mm -hmm. 229 Havelock Street, and 243 Havelock Street. And those are the ones right, you know, somewhat in proximity to, to this one. And so in that um, email exchange, a community planning staff member indicates an updated site plan. Mm -hmm. Is that updated site plan one that we currently have? No, it's, it hasn't been updated because there wasn't, there aren't any changes to it. This is just more detailed of what we were planning to. Maybe there wasn't enough detail on the original site plan. So we updated this one. This is basically taking the, what's, what we proposed and doesn't change any of the numbers. The slight path configuration I think might be different, but for the most part, nothing's changed on the. And so in their email, they talk about uh, tying the decision to the updated site plan. Does that then? I guess that would be done. Would that be done here? Could we tie it to the? The, the landscape plan? Yeah. Right here. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure. On the third floor deck, and I apologize if I'm misreading the drawings um, because they're quite small, there's, um, it would appear that there's no overlook problem to the south because the existing building extends beyond the third floor deck that you're proposing. But on the attached semi, I believe there's a deck in line with the proposed deck you yes. have. Is there a screen currently between those? Two? I believe so, yes. There's a fence, like a, like a privacy screen. On their deck? On their deck. So there's no need to add one. Okay, thank no. you. Any other questions, panel members? No. Okay, I'll take it into committee. Any comments? Madam Chairman, I had concerns initially because we had a, uh, a memorandum from the planning department that asked whether or not <clears throat> this item should go to committee, notwithstanding the planning concerns, which you've addressed that. It doesn't appear that, or it appears you've resolved those concerns. I had privacy concerns about the third floor deck. It appears that those are all. Based on that, I am prepared to move a motion of approval for the application subject to forestry condition number one. Uh, I think that uh, the um, the proposal meets the four tests and is uh, reasonably um, consistent with the neighborhood character. Are you tying it to these um, landscape, more detailed landscape drawings that go along with the site plan? These two? That's what's part of the planner, planner's exchange. Okay, um, fine. Subject to um, the project being developed in accordance with um, the front yard landscape plan and elevations filed with the committee today. I don't know how else to refer to them. They don't have a number. Not a little date, 28 October 19. That's uh, if you but just say plan submitted. Plan submitted <laughs> today. Oh, yeah, okay. because they have the same title on them. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I have a motion with those conditions from Mr. Is it from Forestry? Yeah. Me do. Oh, I'll second it. Okay. okay. Seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? Your application is approved, sir. Thank you. Item number 22, 140. 141 First Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Email correspondence from the acting coordinator, permits and enforcement parking, as well as nine form letters in support. Can we have your name, please? Sean Galbraith, here on behalf of the applicant. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go straight to questions? I'm fine. Okay. Okay, does anybody have any questions?
No? No. No questions? Okay. okay. So I need a motion. Madam Chairman, I'd like to move approval of this application. I don't have any concerns with it at all. And my motion is uh, uh, has no conditions. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Okay. Thank you. Motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Mr. Salomon. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thanks. All right. Item number 23, 155, Merchant's Wharf. Uh, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, covering letter from Calvin Lance, the solicitor, an OMB decision from 2012, correspondence between our legal administrative assistant and development manager, planning rationale from Kirkor Architects, email correspondence from TRCA, we have a letter recommending approval from Councillor Cressy and correspondence in support from the West Donlands Committee, the Director of Parks Development and Capital Projects, as well as Waterfront Toronto. Okay, panel members. Um, I guess uh, there's, this is the one with tons of variances. Yeah. Uh, do we need a presentation? Yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> that's what I thought. Great, thank you. My name is Calvin Lance. I'm a lawyer acting for Aqualuna Bayside Toronto, Inc. The lands are owned by the City of Toronto. Uh, this application represents the fourth time that we've come to the Committee of Adjustment on the fourth phase of the waterfront development. Um, it's, being, it's being done, we're on the final phase. We're working through site plan approval presently. Uh, the architecture of this building was a result of an architecture competition and, um, and 3XN was uh, chosen. It's gone to the Waterfront Design Committee three times. It's, um, and we've got positive comments. I have large images of what's being proposed and if I may, I'd like to just take you through uh, a couple of um, key points relating to the variances. Can I, can I ask a clarification? You're, you've applied for and you're in negotiating site plan control right now. It hasn't been granted yet. So it, it is possible that through that process you may have to come back for further variances. Well, we were depending on sure if we're at the end of the site plan. So you're, so you're pretty comfortable that this is what's going Absolutely. to go through. Okay. Can I, I just want to ask, I should have asked you this at the beginning. Sure. Um, you're in with a waiver. Like, did yeah. you have a zoning review done or no? I mean, no. why would you, so, this is like a lot of variances yes. and we do have some so, concerns. So the first. Okay. Similar variances. Mm -hmm. The question it begs though are are, are these not are these not bylaw amendments? Um,
And it didn't anticipate this level of articulation, right? Could you speak to the, um, the the one variance that jumped out at me was number 12, <clears throat> because there was a very explicit requirement for a continuous colonnade, and you're not providing that. Can you explain, is that a, is that a hole in an otherwise continuous colonnade, or no. where does it exist, and why isn't it being provided? Yeah. Twelve, yeah. Twelve. Normally, that condition provides for protected weather, protected walkways throughout. So I, I'm water's edge. So you've removed it on each of them. Why is that? Because it seems to me that a colonnade providing weather protection would be desirable. I mean, it wouldn't make sense now for you to incorporate it here if it's gone on all the others, but what was the thinking behind taking it off? I think some people like Yeah, No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I just, I'm, my concern was that if in the rest of the development there was this continuous colonnade and through approval here yes. there's a hole in it, I was concerned with that. So you've explained that. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can you speak to the parking? Um, because you're talking in various number four about fee for parking, would that then not be a commercial parking lot you're creating? And then why do you only provide three spaces for the community center? I'm sure your argument's going to be it's for the people that are in that general area, but yeah, yeah, sure. let's say for argument's sake, they have friends that have cars that yes. want to come. Like, is there more parking under the other buildings, or if you can just expand on that? Absolutely. There is, so variance three relates to the parking, the three parking spaces. That requirement for th a minimum of three parking spaces was at a request of the city and they have to pay for those parking spaces, and they determined they only wanted three uh, for staff, and that's for the community center. So you're saying you were going to give zero? We were happy to give whatever they wanted, and they asked for three. Okay. So that, that's the explanation on that one. Well, where did the 14 come from, though? So presumably there was some thought behind 14 for a community center. Yes, that goes back to the original bylaw, and I, and I wasn't part of drafting that bylaw, so I don't know what considerations went in, but going through this project and vetting what was required, uh, they didn't feel like they needed a 14, they needed three. And there is a cost implication for uh, requesting those spaces, so. 
And then what about the, um, the, the, the section that you're proposing to charge people and how you, like, right. isn't that a commercial parking lot? Does that so, so in that case, what's happening there is a portion of the parking would be provided on a lot where they would pay. In fact, it would be about approximately 14 of the visitor parking spaces. So not all the visitor parking spaces, but about 14 would be on the area where they would have to pay. But there is ample parking in the area. It's just that all of the visitor parking that's required as a minimum in the zoning cannot be contained within the area uh, that's designated for the residential units. Okay. Any other questions, panel members? Yeah. <clears throat> so just back to that, I'm not sure I quite understand so the the fee for the motor vehicles is going to be accessory to the residential parking yes. spaces provided? Yes. And you just said there are 14 of them? Right uh, there? There'll be about 14 visitor spaces that wouldn't be accommodated with the, the parking that's for the residential, so those would be part of the available parking where you'd have to pay to park. And this is just for somewhere visitors. Somewhere in the bylaw has this, the residential parking spaces yes. inside so that there's no... Right, okay. yeah. Mr. Solomon, you have a question? I have no idea how many there were. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a lot of difficulty on, with this because there's just so many variances. We're looking at some 20 odd variances. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that that is should be considered as minor as opposed to perhaps having gone through a rezoning process. Okay. So I guess the, the one way I would approach this, and I kind of indicated this at the beginning, the building was designed like the other f three phases, almost like shoe boxes, without the detail of an architect and a vision. It was very prescriptive in how it was designed, but in advance of architectural drawings, in advance of picking an architect or taking it to the design review committee. Um, I can illustrate a couple of variances here that in the absence of getting these variances, even the as of right building without variances could not be built. So the, it, that's the difficult- Why mm -hmm. through a committee process as opposed to getting the zoning changes through the rezoning process? Yeah. The variances need to be looked at cumulatively, and we have no opposition. In fact, we have letters of support from the community groups, from the local councillor. And when you look at variances, an important factor is one of impact, whether the variances are individually or together, taking together, uh, impactful. And we, it's gone through a very lengthy and thorough investigation by variety of uh, stakeholders and no one has come forward to say that there are impacts here with these variances. Plus, this is the fourth time we've applied for this number of variances. Pick up on my colleague's question. Um, you're looking for an analysis of impact. I think it's quite unreasonable to assume that we are going to give you a thoughtful analysis of impact on this many variances on a project of this size, on an agenda that has 39 items on it. I, I, the process here is not working in the advantage 47. of uh, 47, sorry. It's, it's, not, it's not working to provide the kind of in-depth analysis I think you need. Um, and I share my colleague's concern. This, this is a very difficult application to review within the constraints of a of a committee of adjustment hearing when we have so much other development um, taking our attention. So I'm glad you have the confidence that we can give it the kind of attention it needs. I'm not as confident that it's getting the level of attention that it needs in this process. And I think I'm surprised as well that we didn't receive something from community planning that would have explained and gone through each of these variances if they were in fact heavily involved right. that why we didn't receive something from sure. community planning that would have explained all of this. Okay. So if I may respond to those comments, um, I, I understand your concern. Um, perhaps then in the circumstance, uh, it, it may be appropriate, if you're willing to do so, to defer this item 
and for us to speak with community planning and perhaps with their assistance we could provide something at a at the next community day i i i mean speaking for myself but based on um you know discussions in the briefing this morning as well the are the concerns expressed by mr nipfel that all of us felt this was you know this is a lot of stuff this is like four pages of variances for us to look at and i think that a deferral i would certainly be supportive of that yeah so if on some assumption that we would something yeah. Well, if, yeah. if it was yeah. deferred, I, I would, I agree with, I, as well, I would support deferral. But I think if it is deferred, it should be so that the planning department can give us yeah. a report on this particular application so that we're in better shape to make reasonable That's very decisions. clear, you know, yeah. talking, like kind of <clears throat> summarizing, if you will, yeah. what we have here. I, I think that's a, a fair response, and, and I think it's the most expeditious way of, of dealing with it to give you the level of comfort you need. And um, yeah, there would be the recirculation fees, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I need a motion. I would move that this um, item be deferred uh, and that it be, it come back together with a uh, report from community planning. Um, including recirculation fees. Including circulation fees, yes. Okay. I have a motion to defer. Second the motion. Moved by Mr. Salomon, seconded by Mr. Niffel. All in favor? Okay, so it's been okay. deferred. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 24 is held, so we'll go to item 25, which is 178 roads. Okay, we have before us Copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, email correspondence from the assistant planner, acting coordinator permits and enforcement parking, staff reports from community planning, development engineering, and tree protection. Can we have your name, please? Good afternoon. My name is uh, Glenn Rubinoff. I'm the agent for this application. Okay. Panel members, do we need a presentation? Can we go straight to questions? And, and you're you're aware of the planning report? You're Absolutely, okay yeah. That? Okay. And there's also I don't know an engineering condition, I think. Engineering yes. also um, and, forestry. Okay. And forestry condition number two. So you're yep. all good with that? Okay. I also have some letters of support as well to provide. Okay. Did did you wanna submit them? Thanks. Do you have any questions, panel members? Okay, no problem. You have to bear with us. We have to use laptops now. Although this is this is a test run. January, it's going to be all of us with no no paper. So understood. Patience, patience. Here's these if you want to see them. Okay. Do you have any questions? I don't have any no? questions, no. Okay. Can you just quickly speak to the front that variance requested for front exterior main wall height? Is this something that we've seen elsewhere? Um, <laughs> yes, a few. Um, yeah. If you look at the overhead here, you can see the front wall. It's effectively uh, a facade to match similar developments on, on adjacent properties, uh, but that's what the wall heights for the front that's facade. The plans you submitted. That yes, way. that's correct. Okay. Sorry. Any other questions? No. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here. Okay. You're okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. That's so something. we're in committee. <laughs> Comments? Questions? Uh, no. No questions. Motion. Madam Chairman, I'd like to move approval of the application subject to uh, the planning conditions that the um, project be substantially uh, constructed in accordance with the drawings, the development engineering um, condition, which I gather you're familiar with, which yep. is to um, speak to reverse slope driveways and forestry condition number two. Okay, do I have a seconder? Second. Okay. 
Motion is moved to approve. Moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Ms. Valentini, including the conditions outlined by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you. Item number 26, 165 Erie Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, and floor plans, correspondence from Edward Lee, the agent, a staff report from community planning, and correspondence in support from Mark Sherman, 383 Westmoreland. And can we have your name, please? Yes, good afternoon. Edward Lee, the agent for the owner. Okay, you've seen the recommendations from plan? Yes. Okay, you're okay with that? Yes, I do have uh, fresh off the uh, press, um, Councillor Bailao's letter of support oh, as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? Any questions? No? No. Okay, we'll take it into committee. Madam Chairman, I'd like to move approval of the application subject to the two planning conditions um, regarding the proposed restaurant. I think this is a very straightforward application and clearly meets the four tests. Okay, do I have a seconder? Okay. Motion moved to approve, including the planning conditions. Moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Mr. Salomon. All in favor? Your application is approved. Great. Thank you. Okay, item number 27, 98 Glen Albert Drive. For the people standing in the back, if you want to sit in the second row here, that's okay. All right, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, planning rationale from John Ramirez, the agent, and a staff report from Tree Protection. Can we have your name, please? John Ramirez. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation, or can we go to questions? I don't need a presentation. No? Okay, we'll go to questions. I had a, just a quick question. I understood from reviewing the materials that the additional depth, uh, length depth, over the bylaw coverage is because of the front porch and the proposals debate underneath, or am I completely wrong? It's the rear porch. Oh, it's the rear porch, okay. But it's already existing. Focus. Yes. You're not is. going beyond that. No, we're not going beyond the porch. Okay, thank you. It's for storage, right? Yes. Underneath the porch. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. No All right. Okay, go ahead. Um, given that this, se this seems to be a minor variance in my opinion, so I'm prepared to bring a motion forward for approval of the application subject to the condition of urban forestry, condition number three. All right, do I have a seconder? <clears throat> okay, motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Salomon. All in favor? The application is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. Item number 30, 98 Hazelton Avenue. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, 21 photographs of the subject property and other minor variance approvals in the area, copy of correspondence from, uh, that was uh, sent to the neighborhood residents from Adrian Tauro and Sloan Maurin, the applicants. We have email correspondence from permits and enforcement parking, staff report from Heritage, and we have correspondence in support from 9892 and 68 Hazelton Avenue. Hi. Can we Hi, I'm, your name? I'm Janice Robinson of Goldberg Group, representing the owners. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? No? Okay. Any questions? I had a question about the building length. If you could just kind of go over um, what that extra length is and, and how is that affecting the abutting lots? Yes, so the, um, the existing length of the dwelling above grade is actually not changing. It reflects existing conditions. The dimension that is um, with the variance, the 25.08 is the dimension um, to the end of the basement, which was extended below grade. So the actual length above grade is 22.2 meters, and that's the same length that exists. And on the second story, the length of the second story matches the rear wall of the semi-detached next door. Any other questions? No. Okay, we'll take it into committee. 
I'd like to move approval of the application subject to the heritage condition, which you're aware of. Yes. Okay. Um, I think it's a very straightforward application. Clearly meets the four tests and is an asset to the community. Okay, motion to approve, including the heritage condition. Moved by Mr. Niffel. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to item number 24. 49 Burnside. All right, is the opposition still here? Can you come to the front row, please, sir? Uh, panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, previous committee decision, heritage impact assessment prepared by EVOC, as well as correspondence from Dima Cook from EVOC regarding the heritage impact assessment, covering letter from Tyler Peck, the agent, email correspondence from the assistant planner. We have correspondence from Ravine and natural feature protection as well as heritage. Staff reports from Ravine and Natural Feature Protection and Heritage. So we have 16 form letters in support from residents on Burnside and Witchwood Park. And we have correspondence in opposition from Timothy Hughes, the Witchwood Park Heritage Advisory Committee. Can I have your name, please? Good afternoon. Tyler Peck from WND Associates Planning Consultants for the owner. Okay. Can you give us a brief presentation? Sure. Um, the site in this case is located at 49 Burnside Drive in the far southeast portion of the Witchwood Park HCD with site driveway access off of Burnside. There is an intervening vacant property to the west between the site and the remainder of the HCD. The proposal, if you can put up the site plan, um, includes demolition of an existing gazebo and east side addition and garage and uh, construction of a one-story side, east side addition and attached garage to the existing detached house. Reconstruction and expansion of an existing original third story is also proposed. And as part of the redevelopment, um, it includes general restoration of a number of the heritage elements of the existing building. The requested variances in this case before the committee are the result of a particularly unique site circumstance where the lot technically does not have a public road frontage. There's a 0.37 meter gap between the lot line and the Burnside Drive right of way with access provided by an easement. As a result, under Toronto Buildings practice, the established grade on this site is taken as an average of the points, I can't point to it, but the, um, the various uh, corners of the lot, which in this case, because of the topography of the lot where the grade changes significantly down on the west and southern lot lines. The established grade, if you can put up the next portion, um, in this case technically under the bylaw is actually below the existing finished floor level of the basement. So therefore, the proposed floor space index in this case of 0.459 is, is a result of this, as it requires that the basement area is included in the GFA, whereas under normal circumstances for a detached house, this area would not be included. Excluding the basement area, the, G, the proposed GFA is 0.324, which is under the 0.35 um, permitted in this area of the city. Excluding, including the proposed additions and excluding the existing basement. Existing. 0.282, I believe. Yeah. 0.324, excluding the basement, including the additions. With respect to the um, the number of story variants, the house is proposed to remain a three-story flat roof building above grade as it is today. This anomalous established grade is requiring that technically the basement is included as a floor as it's closer to the established grade, resulting in a technical four-story building, including the basement. The proposed building height is also measured from this established grade line, resulting in a technical flat roof building height at its highest point of 13.92 meters. Whereas, for example, if this height was measured as per established grade under the previous bylaw, the building height would be 11.89 meters, which is under the 12 meters permitted in the area as well. The proposed additions are compatible with the existing house and surrounding neighborhood, and the visual impacts of the third floor have been specifically minimized through a sensitive design and sloped portions of the roof from the north to the south, as well as from the east to the west, as that can be shown on the next elevation. You can see the sloped portion of the roof there. 
terms of the views, um, the next two views, the um, proposed additions have been designed to minimize visual impacts. The existing is on the left, the proposed on the right. The north wall of the proposed third floor reconstruction is in line with the original line of the third floor at its northeast corner. Based on uh, feedback from Heritage Preservation Services, the third floor plan was simplified and made symmetrical in order to complement the geometry of the main house. The northern portion of the third floor is just 0.1 meters taller than the existing third floor, regularized across the house and then sloped up to the south. The third floor of the house has always been visible from some angles and the proposed um, third floor addition remains subordinate to and complementing of the main structure and remains very minimally visible from inside Witchwood Park. Community planning have been consulted and have no objection to the application. Uh, the committee, you have in your files a positive staff report from Heritage Preservation Services. As a summary, it states that the variances will result in a development that conserves the cultural heritage resource of the existing building, is appropriate, appropriately addresses and is consistent with the Witchwood Park HCD and the city's official plan and heritage policies and as a result of engagement with both HPS and the Witchwood Park Heritage Advisory Committee. There's an HIA on file um, and HPS staff also agree with its findings. We have um, 15 letters of support in file um, from neighbors. I've also received some additional emails since that po point of, from four neighbors who are in support. And if you can see, you can see on this, the purple color are those um, who have filed letters of support, and that includes all immediately adjacent neighbors. The blue are those who have no objection but haven't filed a, a, a letter with the committee. My time appears to be up, so I will wrap up just by advising um, the committee that the application meets the four tests of the, of the Planning Act for minor variances, it conforms to the neighborhood and heritage policies of the official plan, the intent of the bylaw with respect to compatible building height uh, and flat roof height are met, um, as well as the technical issues um, with respect to the number of stories and floor space index. And the, as demonstrated by the support of the community, there are no adverse uh, visual impacts or otherwise privacy overlook on any of the adjacent properties. I can answer any questions or... You've gone to some pains to make the third floor not dominate the structure. Can you, I, I just because I don't understand from the drawings, Sure. what material is being used there? The rest of the building is masonry, but is this a... Do you know I don't know the answer to that question? <laughs> the architects can answer that question. It's been specifically vetted through at Heritage Preservation Services. And, uh, my name is Meg Graham. I'm a principal of Supercool. We are the architects for the application. Mm -hmm. Um, under the advisement of our heritage consultants and HPS, uh, it was recommended that we use a material that was subordinate to gotcha. the existing, so it, we are proposing a um, standing seam, either zinc or um, uh, some sort of compatible material, uh, similar material to that. Okay. So again, it will recede, and that is the idea. Absolutely. Thank you. I also think that the heritage impact assessment is very impressive. Okay. Uh, any other questions before I go to the opposition? Okay. Thanks. We'll have you come back. Thank you. Hello, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Ian McDonald. Um, I am uh, a resident of Witchwood Park. I'm a member of the Witchwood Park Heritage Advisory Committee, WIPAC. Um, WIPAC is composed of four elected members and two appointed members. I'm an appointed member because I also happen to be a trustee in Witchwood Park. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is compliment the proponent on the quality of the package and the, the thoroughness of it. It was very clear what was being proposed. And, and that's, uh, that's unusual and it, it, it's made everything work a little better. Um, we are making a submission here today as WIPAC, the, the Heritage Advisory Committee, um, uh, because of issues that this case has exposed in our relationship with Heritage Preservation Services rather than, you know, we wish that the third floor was less visible, but, but we acknowledge that it's going to likely go ahead as it is, but we'd like to have on file um, our objection to that and our um, for the for the sake of moving forward with with heritage preservation services, um, WIPAC is made up of volunteers who put a lot of time in, and in the, in matters of this sort, acrimony can develop, unfortunately. And I, I guess everyone has been trying to do the right thing. We've had difficulty with. Uh, 
HPS in the in the timeliness of their responses to us, and we didn't understand uh, where they were coming from on some matters. Um, with regard to this, Tim Hughes, who is a, a, a the chair of the Witchwood Park Heritage Advisory Committee, submitted a letter which I believe you received uh, this morning and are familiar with. Uh, he identifies issues in that where um, we have a clear plan. Our plan is not a, a strong document. It has a number of that's the whole list of issues related to additions to existing houses. And uh, two of them, uh, that, that additional work should not be visible from the park road and that the height of an addition should not exceed that of the existing building. Those are two very clear passages. And um, what, Tim's a lawyer and he talked to the representative of HPS and said, you know, on what basis can you offer an exclusion to a clearly stated requirement or limit? And the idea was that it could be if there if there's a good reason for the exclusion, then uh, you can you can offer one. They can offer one to the proponents. So the reason that they offered was that the the work would not be visible from the park road. Uh, so I have some photographs to submit. Walking down the road from Rock. So it, it is visible, and to that end, I guess it's, it, you know, one wonders how the exclusion could be granted, but nonetheless, I gather that it has been. Um, WIPAC, the committee at WIPAC proposed a, a, a minor change to further lower. There's already been one lowering of the third floor by 14 inches. Uh, there was a proposal that it could potentially be lowered a f bit more, and that's been rejected by the proponents. So uh, we'd be very happy to see that happen, but it, we're, I acknowledge it's unlikely that it will. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all I've got to say. Okay. If, if the third floor was lowered, though, you'd still see it. You would be aware of its presence, yes, but it would have less presence. And is your concern that it dominates the major structure? Is that your larger concern, or is yes, it the mass of the building? It's not the mass of the building. It's the well. It's it. It is. It has more presence as viewed from the park road. We 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 entertain applications from uh, among the very sixty six different houses in Witchwood Park, and every time someone does something that where there is a regulation that clearly addresses an issue of height in relation to the existing building, the artifact, if that changes. Uh, then other people will use that as a precedent and, cl and claim that they should be able to do the same thing. Makes it harder, and it is it is clearly defined in our plan. So we had an issue with that. Okay. Do we have any other questions of the speaker panel members? Did you have an issue with the existing third floor? The existing third floor is barely visible. It, Why it, is that? Because it's set back from the set, from the north wall by eight feet. The current one is only five feet back. Thank it's you. about a forty percent closer, which gives it much more prominence, even at its existing height. It goes higher; it becomes more prominent as well. Any other questions of the speaker? No. Thank okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Pack, can you just speak to the issue raised, please? Sure. Um, there were a number of issues raised. In, in terms of process with HPS, um, the proposal has been designed through extensive consultation. I have a <laughs> list of, from our architects of numerous meetings and correspondence since April um, with several iterations of the design, some of which are in the committee's files undertaken as a result of this consultation with heritage staff and with the Heritage Advisory Committee. Uh, with respect, the advisory committee is advisory to staff and HPS staff are delegated with the authority to issue uh, heritage permits where an applicant, an application rather is consistent with the HCD plan. It's very clear from their report um, that they support the proposal and they uh, support the conclusions of the HIA referenced by the committee member earlier, um, that the proposal is consistent with the HCD plan. I accept and I recommend that the committee accepts the professional advice of the HCD or the HIA consultant as well as HPS staff in this case. Um, with respect to, to visibility of, of the building, the uh, 
proposed design is, is sensitive. It's been designed through extensive consultation, issues related to cladding, window placement. The existing third floor is 1.26 meters above the parapet. This has been visible uh, since 1922. We have a photograph of, of the third floor um, visible from, from a portion of the park. Um, the visibility of 49 Burnside Drive is also quite limited within the park to a small area and generally only in, in the winter months. Um, the sections of the HCD plan um, that Mr. McDonald referred to do allow for interpretation and um, exceptions to be considered if the addition is considered to be compatible with neighboring houses and the overall character of the park. It's clear from the extensive analysis that's been done by both heritage staff and our heritage consultant um, that this uh, proposal in this case meets that test. And I would just lastly and quickly point out to the committee staff that the, the reason we're before you with these variances for height, et cetera, is actually largely to do with the unique technical nature of the established grade on this, on this particular site. Um, and happy to address any of the committee's questions regarding that. Okay. Panel members, do you have any more questions of Mr. Peck? Are you able to show us a diagram that shows the comparison of the existing third story compared to the proposed reconstruction of the third story and how, how the change is? Okay, yeah. So the section here, the dark black line is the existing building. The da dash line is the height, uh, the lower dash line is the proposed height of the um, north wall, so that's the one facing the, the park and the neighbors to the north, um, which is at 0.1 meters taller than the existing building. It's um, been provided as symmetrical and still subordinate to the, to the existing building as per the heritage comments. And then the roof slopes back to the rear um, at the, the proposed height. And Actually, while, while I think of it in terms of the, the proposal to lower the height, the height was lowered from earlier iterations by uh, more than a foot. And the applicant and their team did have gone above and beyond in terms of consultation and um, reviewing the feasibility of uh, further lowering the height. And it's simply not feasible for structural reasons, headroom reasons, um, and one other reason that I can't recall off the top of my head. Yeah, that's just the internal design and functionality of the space to allow for um, usable reconstructed space. Any other questions, panel members? Okay, so we'll take it into committee. Madam Chairman, as I indicated earlier, I was in that gather, which would park as well, was uh, very impressed with the heritage impact assessment that was undertaken. Um, I think there's been goodwill shown on both sides, and talent also has uh, demonstrated in trying to make the top floor as inconspicuous as possible. It appears to me that of opinion, but that um, Heritage Preservation Services um, is under the impression that they've listened to and responded to which park. In their report to us, they've said that the revisions to the plans are the result of which, per which would park feedback on the proposal, perhaps not ex exactly as you would wish, but um, they have tried as best they can to respond to. Um, to the comments that were made by Witchwood Park. And I think the proposal that's before us is a reasonable one. I think the variances that are requested are reasonable, and I'd like to move approval of the application subject to the heritage condition, which is the standard one about submitting drawings for permit. Okay, motion to approve, including the heritage conditions. Moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Mr. Solomon. All in favor, and your application is approved. Thank you. Sir, did you, did you fill out the decision request card? Okay, I'm not, I think they're, where are they? Yeah, maybe fill one out and give it to staff. Okay, thanks. 
Okay, the next item is item number 28. Uh, right there. Sorry. Okay, to Dingwall Avenue. And if the opposition's still here, if you can grab a seat on the side here. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, an arborist report from Jody Steigers, a certified arborist, email correspondence from the assistant planner, eight form letters in support from residents on Dingwall and Carla, as well as one on PAPE, opposition from number six and number four Dingwall. All right, so if we can have your name, please. And uh, Yes, my name is uh, Francesco Martire. I'm uh, one of the principals at Large and Medium Design Office, and we're the architect uh, for this project at Tuding Wall Avenue. Okay, so you have five minutes for a presentation. Um, so the proposal is for a, uh, a rear, uh, the, the bulk of the proposal is for a, a two-story rear addition. Um, it uh, is going to also have a uh, rooftop uh, deck on that uh, second floor, which is a kind of walkout from their third floor space. Um, there's also a small uh, addition, uh, which will be a pop-out on the uh, front uh, of, the, um, uh, of the house. Um, and also uh, part of that proposal is that um, there will also be a walkout uh, deck um, with uh, as well uh, a green space uh, or a roof, uh, a, a green roof uh, on the portion that you cannot walk on. Um, oh, sure. Oh, disconnect. This, this has happened to us times. You have to disconnect and reconnect. Yeah. Apologies for that. Um, so you can see the uh, there's a two-story addition. Um, the the bulk of that addition is in alignment uh, with the one-story addition of the adjacent. Um, an attached uh, neighbor at uh, Fort Ingwall. Um, there is a uh, cantilevered portion uh, that pops out. Um, sorry, I can't read the dimension from here, but I think it's uh, about uh, uh, two feet or so uh, from that addition as well. And then the upper portion, as I mentioned, will be used as a, uh, as a rooftop uh, deck um, as a walkout from the third floor space. Um, we we have uh, I know that you the committee has on file um, a number of uh, letters of in, of in support of the uh, proposal. I believe there's nine in total. Um, there is one that didn't make it into the file. I can provide you with that if uh, we have eight. Yeah, I have the ninth with me. Uh, I can provide you with that if you would like. Um, and. Uh, um, Sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. Um, and so we we feel that uh, um, the the two story addition uh, in the back and also the pop out at the front is in is in obviously in keeping with the neighborhood. We find that the, the number of variances that we um, we have and we're we're seeking are minor in nature um, and uh, are seeking for uh, approval for the for the project. Okay, panel members, do you have any questions before we go to the opposition? No? Okay. So we'll have you back after we hear from the opposition. Yep. Thanks. Okay. How many people are speaking? Two. Two. Okay. Okay. So we need your um, name and address. Uh, my name is Christine Kim, and I reside at 4 Dingwall. It's the semi-detached home that adjoins to Dingwall <coughs> Avenue. Okay. You have five minutes. Thank you. Um, well, I guess uh, oddly a little bit nervous, <laughs> so I'll try to get through this. Um, I was, first of all, not consulted about my neighbor, um, and I believe we have good relations regarding the, the uh, request for the relief by the bylaw. I was notified two weeks prior to the submission date. Um, however, upon receiving notice and carefully reviewing the proposed plan, uh, my position is to object to the variances requested. I believe they are not minor in nature. 
and if granted, they'll create a, a built form that is out of keeping with the character of the neighborhood. In addition, the negative impact of the proposed changes upon my home are significant. In particular, the effects of privacy, light, and shadowing are significant, and I believe well beyond minimal. Um, if in the submission letters I, I attached photos, I'm not sure if they're in front of you. And if not, I, I could just uh, put them on the projector as well. Well, we have pictures, but they don't come out very well because they're photocopied. Okay, would it be helpful if... Uh, if you have the actual okay. pictures. Okay, yes. thanks. Um, so if the requested relief is granted and development is permitted of the floor um, space index at 1.04 times a lot area as, the pose, as opposed to the allowable FSI of 0 0.60. So I just want to um, demonstrate here is these are the following reasons in terms of how it would impact my house. I'm going to take that up only because I need to read the notes off my paper. Sure. <laughs> Not as organized. Um, so the primary reason I actually chose to live at Fort Dingwall, it was over a decade ago, was the unusually bright lights throughout the home. There's extensive skylights, especially those on the ground floor. The proposed, um, the proposed renovations would be um, blocking and providing um, shadow and uh, blocking of the skylight, as you as you can see. Uh, my home has a one-floor northeast addition, a sunroom with a bay window on the south side, as you have seen, with double glass doors. Um, Looking through the skylights in the direction of two ding wall, we currently see the tree and skies and light enters the house. If approved, the applicant's three-story addition, including the east wall on the outdoor deck, would be visible and would block significant light and would greatly impact my and my family's privacy. Outside of the east wall double doors is an outdoor seating area, like a little patio set with a roof, which is another two large skylights. I was told that there are some sort of um, personal reasons why the expansion of the house, and I actually don't feel I like to disclose why the skylight and lighting is important for my family as well, mainly because I'm on YouTube, but I feel that that information is private. I just want to demonstrate to you what I look at uh, when I sit in the sunroom. That's a view from the backyard at the bottom, and from the top, that is one of the skylights um, that my couch is right underneath, and this is where I sit whenever there's light. Sorry, that was... Can I move on? Okay. Uh, needless to say, we spend most of these um, times in these spaces because of the lighting. On the second floor, yeah. I had trouble, but then the photographs were really dark in what I had at home. Yeah, can I? You have three, you have three skylights. Are they... I have two in the sunroom, and the third one is on the outside patio. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. Yeah, I could... it's so okay, it looked to me like the, the addition at the back was larger than this. That's just one of the skylights, and in the back, there you go. Total three. And so, for, for how long of the day would oh, no, there the be floor. impacts on the, those skylights from a. a two-story uh, addition adjacent to that, like... It's a three-story, uh, sorry, three-story. Yeah, so I'm trying to understand what's the... What's the impact uh, and for how long for those skylights during the day? So the question is, is how, how much, how it would the new additions impact the lighting of my area? Uh, well, one thing I do know is when I sit out there in the morning, I can, I, right now I see sky, um, and it's very bright, and what I would view now would be their side of the home. You just keep saying it's a three-story addition. It is a two-story addition. So, you understand that, right? So it's a, two st uh, it's a two-story with a balcony. Okay, but technically it's... Right, okay, yes. There's a deck. The wall would be the... to make sure you didn't think it was going three full stories. Right, with the... Okay, thank you. Thank you for that clarity. Um, yes, that's my understanding do, do as well. Do you have a lot more in your notes? Because I'll give you a little bit of extra time because we've interrupted. But okay, right. yeah, yeah. So the other two rooms that it would impact is um, my daughter's room, which is facing um, the street of Dingwall. And again, it has bay windows. And their addition would impact... 
just in terms of my concern is around lighting and privacy. The third piece here is the, the room is my home office. I'm a family mediator and trainer, and I do a lot of work at home in terms of my writing. And that sunlight is crucial in terms of why I even chose that house in the first place. Um, I, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to just move quickly. Uh, in closing, to my understanding, any variances impact on light, shadowing, and privacy are to remain minimal. A variance is a privilege rather than a right, and ought not to be afforded when it causes significant negative impact to my adjoining home. The proposed front and back additions, and so all of the proposed variances, would cause significant negative impact on privacy lighting, and as you see, three critical rooms in my adjoining home. As my understanding, neighborhood development is limited to limited is intended to be sensitive and gradual with little visible change and with the neighborhood density and character remaining. I do believe the applicants proposed front and back additions are beyond the prevailing character of Dingwall Avenue. For these reasons, I ask that you consider that the floor space index variance alone as not meeting the requirements as being minor in nature. In fact, in my opinion, they're quite ma major. Okay, I do need you to wrap up now. Um, so I think that's it from my end, um, and I thank you for your time and consideration. Okay. Um, any questions of the speaker, panel members? No? no? Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, my name is Elizabeth Scozzato, and um, I live at 6 Dingwall Avenue. Um, I'm just going to read this. My partner, Dana Stewart, is Stewart and I own the property at 6 Dingwall, and we're here to express our strong objection to this request for variances at 2 Dingwall Avenue. We've been in the house for over 21 years, and we've never attended a variance hearing. And we've had a number of uh, variance requested, you know, notices over the years at our house, and we've never contested any of those. However, these requested variances aren't minor, and they don't reflect the existing characteristics of the neighborhood. They represent substantive changes that will have significant adverse impacts on our home and property, as well as those of our neighbors and of their properties. We want to be clear that we're not against development. We want to see appropriate, desirable development that adheres to the, the vision um, of neighborhoods in, the Toronto, uh, in Toronto's official plan. Our neighborhood is compact and densely populated with smaller lots and houses situated closely to adjoining homes. It's a low scale residential neighborhood with distinctive characteristics and it is zoned as one of Toronto's established neighborhoods. Our neighbors at 2 Ding Mall Avenue have made a choice about the size of their home and the use of their property. They propose to build a significantly bigger house on their existing lot. Their proposal includes two additions that will provide them with bigger living room and dining room areas on the ground floor, as well as addition of a new bathroom on the ground floor. It will allow for the enlargement of two existing bedrooms and an existing bathroom on the second floor, and it also includes expanding their outdoor space with the addition of new second floor rooftop deck at the back and a new smaller rooftop deck at the front. So I'll begin to address our concerns about the proposal with an excerpt from the official plan. It's called, uh, it's, the section is making choices. There's no such thing as an isolated or purely local decision. Each of us makes choices about where we live, work, play, shop, and how we travel. They seem to be small choices, but together and over time, the consequences of these choices can affect everyone's quality of life. And, there's, and that's why planning matters. What Toronto will grow, our choice is not whether we'll grow, but how we will grow. Making Toronto better should always come before making Toronto bigger, but we understand that Toronto will be bigger. And now I'm going to quote from the official plan in a lot of places. The official plan states that the stability of our neighborhood's physical character is one of the keys to success of Toronto's success. And that's from chapter 4, section 1 of the plan. The official plan also says, and I quote, physical changes are, uh, are meant to be sensitive, gradual, and fit the existing physical character. Again, the same chapter. A key uh, objective of the official plan is that the new development, and I quote, uh, should respect and reinforce general physical patterns in the neighborhood, same chapter. 
and uh, from Chapter 4, Policy, uh, policy uh, Section 5, Subsection C, F, and G, development in established neighborhoods will respect and reinforce the existing physical character of each geographic neighborhood, including, in particular, the prevailing heights, massing, scale, and density of nearby residential properties, the prevailing setback of buildings from the street, and the prevailing patterns of rear and side yard setbacks and landscaped open space. The official plan states that infill housing, which includes this kind of addition and, and renovation at Two Dingwall, will have, and I quote, uh, have, heights, have heights, massing, and scale that are respected of those permitted by zoning for nearby residential properties, will have setbacks from adjacent residential properties and public streets that are proportionate to those permitted by zoning uh, for adjacent resi residential properties, and shall provide adequate and this is really important to us, adequate privacy, sunlight, and sky views for occupants of, occupants of new and existing buildings by ensuring adequate distance and space between existing building walls. And now I'll turn to the zoning bylaws. And the zoning bylaws set maximum floor place for buildings in neighborhoods that are proportionate to the size of the lot, maximum heights for structure, as well as minimum setbacks for lot lines and minimum distances from adjoining walls. The proposed bylaw variances, if allowed, would result in a structure that exceeds the permitted floor place uh, space index by 92.6 square meters, and that's a 74% increase above what's permitted in terms of floor place in, uh, in index for this property. It'll also exceed the maximum permitted height by 0.42 meters, and it will re reduce the minimum separation distances from side walls as well as setbacks from side lot lines to 0 0.00 meters. The variances, if granted, would result in additions that are out of character with the general physical pattern of our neighborhood and would include the addition of a large new story uh, two-story structure with a rooftop deck that will loom over our backyard, depriving us of sky views, sunlight, and privacy in our backyard. Sorry to interrupt, but do you have a lot left in your submission? Not a ton. Okay, I'll give you another minute. Okay, okay. that's it. Uh, and it'll ob obstruct natural light in our home. The obstruction of exterior sunlight, interior natural light, and current sky views in conjunction with lack of privacy expectations will negatively affect our enjoyment of our home and our outdoor green spaces. It'll impair the health of our trees, gardens, and grass, and those of our neighbors. We're concerned that this will also set a precedent whereby other new applicants uh, for additions in our neighborhood will rely on this precedent. So in summary, the requested variances aren't minor. The proposal is not desirable for appropriate development and use of land and, and the existing building at 2 Dingwall Avenue. The proposed variances are contrary to the general intent and purpose of the city's zoning by code and bylaws and of its original uh, official plan. So in closing, our neighbors at 2 Dingwall want to build a significantly larger house on their existing lot. Their, their neighbors, us, will, will bear the consequences. It'll significantly affect our quality of life and those of our neighbors. This proposal is about bigger, but not about better. And for all those reasons, we respectfully ask the committee not to approve these uh, zoning variances. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker, panel members? No? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Martire, if you can please address the concerns that were raised. Uh, yes, uh, may, I, uh, may I approach? I just have a couple of uh, sunshade studies that I'd like to offer. Are you going to speak to those? Uh, I will. I, think I, can do it from... I was going to suggest you put it on the overhead. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. If there's a microphone there, you can maybe just push the button and because try that. Is there? Is there Hello? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I can't see you, but um, that's fine. Um, I just wanted to address a, a couple of the issues that were raised um, uh, in particular. Um, the first one perhaps is one that um, not in character uh, with the site. Um, the, the site is certainly not as uh, 
um, homogeneous as it's uh, 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 being made out to be. Uh, these are um, all of these houses, with the exception of uh, this one here, um, are all on Dingwall um, Avenue, um, you know, in, in relative proximity to the subject property. Um, the the last one here is on Frizel. Avenue, which is just north, um, and that house shares a, a laneway. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, not in keeping with the neighborhood, um, you can see that there's a lot of variety already um, in the neighborhood that, uh, that exists. Um, with the issue of, uh, of uh, GFA, um, um, the, the committee, um, so I, I've done a bit of research in terms of uh, trying to find some precedent. Um, in back in 2008, uh, 11 Dingwall looked at, uh, uh, they were seeking 0.97 times lot coverage, um, and they were approved on that. Um, in uh, 2016, 23 Dingwall was looking at 1.3 lot times coverage, and they were approved on that. Um, and then uh, 90, or sorry, 47 Dingwall uh, in 28 was looking for 1.14 lot times coverage. Um, and again, they were approved there. So you can see that um, there is certainly precedent in the neighborhood for, um, for projects that have um, um, increased their lot area. I think what's also, what should be pointed out is the existing houses, in particular this house, um, it's already at 0.82 uh, lot times coverage. Um, in terms of, uh, um, one of the individuals had asked about uh, how much time is the uh, neighboring uh, or their neighboring lots in in shade. Um, so if we look at so we've done a number of sh sun shade studies. Um, so we'll look at the uh, upper one here uh, at Mar on uh, March 21st. So that's without the proposed addition. Uh, you can see that uh, the bulk of the um, the single story addition on the flanking. Um, our, our attached neighbor uh, already, all three of those skylights are in full shade. Um, if we look at the bottom, um, again, we're looking at December 21st now, um, again, in, in full shade. Um, what I think is, uh, is, hasn't been made clear is that essentially this is a north elevation, um, and I realize because of the grid that there will get some western light. Um, and so what we did uh, look at then our, our June 21st, um, in terms of the longest day of the year and looking at, at uh, so we look at, at the upper portion here at noon without the addition, um, essentially the bulk of those skylights um, are in shade and you can see the exact same time and date down below with the proposed addition. There's in fact no change uh, to the amount of shading on the adjacent um, addition. Um, and again, if we look at the uh, the same date of June 21st, if we look at, at that, um, in terms of uh, the amount of shade, uh, we're looking at the, the first skylight being in partial shade beginning at about 1.30, um, and then it, it's uh, until about 3 o'clock uh, where you start to see all three um, in shade. So the, on the longest day of the year, which obviously would be the worst case scenario, um, we would we'd begin to start to get some shade uh, for approximately a period of time of about two and a half hours um, uh, during a kind of western uh, exposure. Um, in terms of the front addition, um, again, uh, if we look at uh, March 21st at, at 3 o'clock, uh, in the existing condition, essentially you're getting um, shade from the overhang. Um, and then if we look at, uh, again, March 21st at, uh, at 3 o'clock, now with the proposed addition, uh, you are getting some shade on the uh, window of the uh, attached neighbor, but it never affects the, the bay window at that point. Um, and again, if we look at June 21st, um, again, the effect of the uh, pop-out at the front uh, has virtually no effect at all because of the sun angle and because of the overhang of the existing roof. Um, and uh, um, if we look at, uh, again, December 21st uh, with the proposed addition, uh, sorry, with the, without the addition at the top and with the propo proposed addition at the bottom, uh, again, the amount of shade that's being cast in the adjacent neighbor is, uh, is quite minimal. 
Um, in terms of, of views, um, uh, there will be some obstruction of the view at a particular angle uh, from the uh, ad adjacent neighbor um, in terms of viewing through their skylight. So for, if they're looking uh, essentially in the western direction, they will have um, they will see the, uh, a portion of the addition. Uh, of course, if they, if they looked in the direction of, uh, of looking at True North, um, you're, still getting, um, you're still getting a view. Um, the, the light that is coming in from those skylights because of the northern exposure is essentially indirect light. Uh, the only time where it will, will have some uh, portion of shadow being cast from the addition uh, is during that time in June 21st. Um, that's, the, as I said, the worst case scenario. It would start to get better as you start to move either side of that date. Uh, in terms of the privacy issues, uh, you'll notice that on the on the west, uh, sorry, on the east elevation, that is to say, the elevation that separates the adjacent neighbor, the attached neighbor. Uh, this is going back to the rear addition. Uh, we've actually made made that taller. Uh, in order, that is to say, taller than the required guard height that I would, would need there. Um, and we did that because I was worried about the fact that we might have issues of privacy or overlook into the adjacent uh, skylights. Okay, any questions, panel members? Okay, thank you. We'll take it into committee. Okay, any comments or a motion? Just comments. Uh, I am satisfied having seen the sunshade um, diagrams in terms of the impacts um, in the rear yard. And so um, I would move um, approval of the requested variances. Okay, I have a motion moved by Mr. Solomon to approve the variances. Do I have a seconder? My reservations for the, uh, the proposal hinge to a certain, well, I think the drawings or the uh, examples you just showed us um, clearly indicate that this building has much more substantial bulk than its neighbors. But some of that to me is due to a design decision where you've, um, you've got a loft space from the second floor up to the third floor, which then does double duty as a, as a um, it's a barrier to the patio, if I'm reading your drawings correctly, so that the, um, the north edge of the patio is, in fact, quite substantial because it, it allows for a, a two-story space over the living room. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct in, in saying that, and the reason for that is that we, we purposely wanted to kind of thicken up. There's a number of reasons why that happened. Thicken up for privacy. It's for privacy, and Over it. That, that's right, yes. We, we felt that the, the, also the, the, the size of the, of the rooftop deck, um, it, it was just, we, thought, we felt it was too big, um, and so this oper had an, uh, um, this additional benefit of, of thickening up the, essentially what would amount to a parapet wall um, so that you, wouldn't, uh, you would try to eliminate the issue of, uh, of uh, privacy or overlook issues. It's a clever solution. Unfortunately, it, at least on drawings, it gives the impression of the building being bulkier than it is. It's a good solution to, uh, to address privacy, though, it's much better than a... A solid wall. I'm, I'm. Okay, do you have any other questions before we go back into committee? No, that was my question. So that's why this is story. Well, in part, because there is a third wall. store, and then there's a story, and then there's and the a, and then there's a deck, yeah. and then this uh, projected second or fly space above the living room, which gives the impression of it being a third story, yeah. 
w with all due respect, I would okay. still need a... Oh, we're, sorry. we're back in committee sorry. here. So we did have a motion on the floor here to approve the application. So is there a seconder? Um, Madam Chairman, I, I think that the applicant has has shown sensitivity with regard to privacy, with regard to the loss of sunlight and so forth to the maximum extent possible. I don't believe that the floor space index in this particular case, uh, what it's being asked for is out of line with the area and therefore I'm prepared to support the motion. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the application moved by Mr. Salomon, seconded by Mr. Niffel. All in favor. Okay, your application is approved. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, have you folks filled in the decision request cards? Okay, so you'll be notified of the committee's decision. Okay, the last application in this time slot is one is 1630 Bloor Street West. Is the opposition still here? Yes. Okay, can you grab a seat on the side, please? Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations a covering letter from Neil Rogers, the agents, correspondence from Catherine Krug, um, also an agent, staff report from community planning, as well as a report from the development coordinator, property planning and development from the TTC, which is for information only. Can we have your name, please? My name is uh, Neil Rogers. I am the applicant. I'm also one of the owners of 1630 Bloor Street West. Okay, you have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, today we are seeking variances uh, to four uh, items under uh, 438-86. First is a variance with respect to an increase to the non-residential GFA of the lot. For perspective, it should be noted that we are not seeking a variance to the total GFA of the lot. This is a request to vary the non-residential GFA from 1.5 times to 2.46. Uh, uh, the use that we are uh, 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 doing here is a hotel use which is permitted under 438 in the MCR zoning designation. Secondly, receive permission to vary the first floor height from 4.5 meters to 3.5 meters. We note that there is precedence for this variance across the Toronto and East York uh, district. In fact, I can cite two particular uh, cases, spe specifically at 1598 to 1604 Queen Street East, which was one of our applications, uh, uh, and also in September 2017 to a property at 1679 Bluer Street East, uh, sorry, West, which is the southwest corner of Indian Road and Bluer Street West. The third variance, um, is a bylaw requiring a step back of five meters above the fourth floor. We propose to vary this requirement to 3.5 meters above the fourth floor. I'd like to refer you to, if you choose to uh, review the exhibit list that we submitted, pages four, page seven, and the photograph on page 11. We are seeking this variance to accommodate two key building and Ontario building code objectives the configuration of the elevator and the two exit stairs for the purposes of fire safety and egress per the Ontario Building Code and ensuring that the building depth of 1630 Bloor Street does not impact the east facing windows from 1638 Bloor Street West on the third and fourth panels of that building. Keep in mind that that uh, 1638 was built to the lot line. Fourthly, require a variance to encroach the building to our west containing windows from the standard of 5.5 meters to 4.24 and 5.31 meters from the side lot line. This condition is related to the six story element of the proposal. Firstly, the variance is minor. Planning staff in their staff report have noted that, and I quote, the minimum building setbacks maintain adequate access to light and privacy for the adjacent residents within an urban context, close quote. And we will continue to have conversations and discussions with urban design and planning staff to propose building design measures to mitigate matters addressed by the residents of 1638 uh, Bloor Street West. If I could speak quickly to the uh, staff report of December 4th, 
Staff are supportive of the proposal. We have been in discussions with staff uh, concerning this particular property for well over a year. Uh, in the staff report, uh, uh, it, I, 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 I um, quote, represents an appropriate scale of intensification consistent with the vision and objectives of the Bloor Dundas Avenue study. Furthermore, the proposal diversifies the range of non-residential uses in the area and strengthens the Main Street function of Bloor Street West. We are prepared to consent to the condition with respect to access to the roof being limited to property maintenance uh, purposes uh, only. Uh, no other city uh, departments or agencies have expressed concerns or issues. There have been no letters of objection filed. And in summary, Madam Chair and committee, uh, we uh, believe that the variances requested are minor and meet the four tests of the Planning Act. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions before we go to the opposition? No? Okay, thank you. We'll have you back after no problem. we hear from the opposition. Good afternoon. My name is Tony Nathan. I'm a resident at 301 1638 Blow Street West. That's a condo that's on the west side of the, the building. Uh, we, I'm uh, one of the three uh, probably most severely affected, uh, impacted, uh, or will be uh, units uh, of the building. I also represent a, uh, the unit above me, which is probably also one of the three worst impacted uh, units. Uh, her name is uh, Joanna Newton. Unfortunately, she's unable to be here today. The variances you have in front of you uh, are in that form, partly because, uh, in fact, this is uh, the August 29th set of variances. They're in that form partly because of my uh, letter to the original set of variances, which are March uh, 27th. And the zoning examiner uh, made certain amendments uh, to his variances. So if you'd like, I do have uh, the emails between the zoning examiner and myself. I could submit it uh, to if you're interested in that. The, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, the variances, the, the issue that we faced as unit owners in the, uh, the building is that we were not notified by the city, um, and, and provided a public hearing uh, notice as well as the list of the variances until I, I contacted the city uh, on Monday to get uh, the list of variances. The, uh, the, apparently, the city had sent the uh, public notice to our condo board, which conveniently uh, neglected to pass it on to us. What we did receive from the condo board was a notification on Friday afternoon that there's going to be a meeting at 1.30, December the 11th, and that was it. There was no additional information uh, attached. So it's only when I, I contacted uh, the COA Bram, uh, Bram Bulger, on Friday, on Monday um, afternoon, um, that he provided an S3 information. So I'm somewhat uh, at a disadvantage in terms of preparation, uh, but I have put together some, uh, some information which I cobbled together from the information I've been sending to the um, planning division over the last few months. Uh, with that in mind, I'll just very quickly go over the variances that uh, we're concerned about. Could I just clarify, you're, you live in the condominium that's next door? I, I own a unit. I don't live in it. Uh, I have tenants in my, in my unit. But the, uh, the, a, how many units are there? Uh, in the entire condominium? Yeah. 108. Okay. Are you speaking for yourself or for the condominium board? Uh, for myself and the, the unit owner above me, so which is uh, unit 401. And, and the condo board has not filed any kind of position? Uh, the condo board has not f uh, filed a position as far as I know, but they have been fairly supportive of the, uh, the developer, yes. So they support it. And just to clarify, your unit, are you, where exactly, when we're looking at from Bloor Street, we yes. see the condo building and which... Okay, uh, let's see if I can put something up. Unless, uh, Neil, you have a site plan or a, of a floor plan with you? Are you like the corner unit? Uh, I'm, I'm at a corner unit, the southeast corner unit. Uh, I'm the third uh, southeast corner unit. Okay. So if... I think it's the third floor. Third floor? 
Yeah. On a flat floor, yes. Well, we can see it on Google. Fantastic. But so he's he's going to lead to them. It's east. North is. Yes, you've got it. Well, four, one. One, two, three. Uh, probably is, yes, yes. There is a balcony, uh, but the balcony is, is uh, facing south, although it does have a view into the uh, subject building. Okay, so if we are looking at that, uh, all right, my unit would be just about, about here. And so Joanna's unit would be just one above. So we are looking directly over the, uh, and we have two primary win uh, uh, two windows, bedroom windows, overlooking the subject property. Uh, this is a, a master bedroom window, and the next one would be a oh, okay, the next one would be a primary window for the second bedroom. And those are the only two uh, side east side uh, windows that we have. So the, the most impacted units would be the first um, units, uh, 201, 301, uh, 401, uh, due to the, the nature of the, the design of the building. And on the far north side, the northeast side, you'll have units uh, 313 and 413 that would be most impacted. So that would be the units right on the other end. So, so I'll, I'll give you another minute, sir. Sure. OK, with that in mind. Yeah. The, uh, to go to very quickly through the, uh, the variances, if you look at uh, variance um, number seven, we have a concern with uh, shadowing. I'm using the old uh, shadow study done 10 years ago for my building. Uh, we we don't done. have a variance yes. number seven. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's uh, we have four, using and referring we have, to the zoning notice. Yeah, we have, so that's number number three, is I believe. We have four variants. Okay, so that would be number three. Okay. Yes, that would be the one for the uh, for the six stories and a step back at the exact step back story. at three point five as opposed to to five. Okay. So that's the old shadow study was done. The black dotted line that you see uh, would be. Uh, my assessment of the length of the, the shadow based on the length of the shadow of uh, my building. So it does block, uh, it would block uh, sunlight, natural sunlight into uh, our units. So that would be the concern with, the, uh, with that particular variance. Okay, you have uh, six and a half minutes, so you're going to have to wrap up sure. in 30 uh, seconds. The, uh, with respect to the variance number four, the concern we have is the nature of the, of the, the setbacks being less than 5.5 meters because of the, the, the north, or rather the, uh, the, the wall that's on our, on our left, which would be the, north, uh, the south side wall of this four-story building, it constricts the entire area. So with the extra protrusion that you have uh, in, the, uh, uh, in that building, which looks like... Okay, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. All right. It's your, you're over seven minutes now. Okay. So I do have uh, information I've put in, in here, and I'll okay. submit it. If the, right. if the members have questions, they'll ask. Sure, okay. So you want to submit the, you said you had something else? Yes. Okay, uh, the emails, you want uh, to submit those? Or? Yes, I'll submit those. So you fantastic. Your concerns basically are, are sunlight and overview. So protrusion. And overview. Uh, yeah. Overview. Okay. So the protrusion would be the setback of this, this area over here. Okay, so you want to yes. submit all this? Yes. Okay. As well as the... Um, uh, uh, zoning. Non, non residential use, uh, excessive non residential use. Okay. One. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. The question I have is is the, your building, how, what is your side yard setback from your side property line? I, I, I need you to speak into the yes. mic because so it's on YouTube. It's, it would be between uh, four to about six, seven inches, depending on uh, where, uh, where on the side yard line. It should have been set back further back. Uh, Ten years ago, that was not done. So number one. Uh, number two, uh, and there were, before the, 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 the study done for the area, or while the study is done for the area, there was no provision made for a situation in which uh, a side yard set back on the lot line with side uh, uh, windows 
what would happen in that case. And I know that in the rest of the, the avenues, there is a provision, and uh, I think it's uh, number 8D, which um, deals with this, and that is that the existing building with side uh, windows will not be negatively impacted. Now, that study that was done yeah. was done by the same author of the, uh, the larger study. But for some reason, nothing was put into that study to, to uh, deal with this issue. Our, our, our building 10 years ago was uh, obviously new, but since then, there have been no new buildings. And we have had this condition, the side uh, wall condition, for 10 years with no provision for what would happen if there was a new building next door. So that was a, a, that's a concern. Go ahead. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Have a good day. OK, Mr. Rogers, if you can please speak to the issue raised. Sure, thank you very much. Um, first of all, um, we, uh, we had a, a community meeting, um, a town hall with, uh, sponsored by the Condominium Corporation. I would say there were about 50 or 60 uh, unit owners uh, in, in attendance. Uh, this gentleman uh, was. At that time, we advised... When was that? That was October 30th. Thank you. Uh, we had already received notice from the committee that our hearing date would be scheduled for December uh, the 11th. Obviously, the time wasn't uh, wasn't clear. I made a comment that uh, you may go on to the City of Toronto's application information website, and we'd be happy to. You know, you're, you're you're free to get information there. And I'm not going to speak to us as to what the condo board's actions were and uh, and were not. With respect to the uh, issue of views. Um, we have had uh, three meetings with uh, this gentleman and other representatives of uh, the condominium. We've had three meetings with the condominium corporation, and we have uh, this. This plan has evolved uh, over that period of time. Um, extensive submissions have been made uh, by individuals. Uh, I would suggest to you that they are all site plan related uh, issues. The staff report speaks to that, that uh, they will continue to have dialogue with us. Uh, we've accommodated a number of issues with respect to, to views. Uh, in the um, in the exhibit list that I provided, one of the uh, solutions uh, to uh, mitigate uh, privacy were, were architectural fins, uh, metal panels that would uh, be affixed to the uh, outer building wall that would help screen um, uh, uh, views. Uh, with respect to uh, variance number three that uh, my friend spoke to, I just want to uh, have my colleague put up the elevation. And this is the, the, the issue of the step back um, above the fourth floor. Uh, the bylaw uh, requires uh, um, uh, five meters. We are providing three. And you can just see where we uh, pierce the angular plane uh, right there. Uh, this is a very common condition that exists in uh, multiple variances that are heard uh, by this committee across uh, the, the city of Toronto. And this, in fact, was done. The positioning of this building is sensitive to the fact that if you look at photograph number 11 in the exhibit list, my friend is right. Back in 2010, the Ontario Municipal Board, by way of uh, a settlement, approved a uh, this 12-story building at zero lot line. And I believe, I wasn't part of the conversations during the Bloor Avenue uh, uh, segment study, that uh, staff somehow probably never considered this site as a redevelopment opportunity. And so it simply uh, fell through the cracks. That's unfortunate. But we are living in an urban condition. And I believe what we have proposed here is, um, is um, reasonable. And uh, staff uh, believe that uh, the proposal also is uh, consistent with uh, an urban and a densely urban setting. Um, Again, with respect to uh, variance number four, uh, the setbacks, uh, it is similar to my previous comments that these are site plan related matters. We're actively engaged with planning and urban design staff uh, on these issues, and I'm confident that we will address them. Uh, we continue to have conversations and will be prepared to have conversations uh, with the condo board and, uh, and unit owners uh, to resolve this matter. Okay, 
Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, panel members? Nope. Okay, we'll take it into committee. Okay, I need any uh, discussion and a motion. I believe the variances are minor. I think the issue is that the adjacent 12-story residential building is built right to the side lot line and has put windows along there. Um, and uh, the proposed building for this site would still be maintaining a side yard setback of over four meters. So there that this building would still be providing a setback from the side lot line. So I would uh, put forward a motion to approve the requested variances subject to community planning uh, conditions. Okay, I have a motion to approve the application, including the planning condition in the December 4th report moved by Mr. Solomon. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Nipfel? Seconded. I agree with my colleague. Okay. I, I think... It's an unfortunate situation, but uh, and I wouldn't hold uh, too much hope that site plan control is going to solve the problem, but at least it is one other opportunity to look at it. But I, I think the issue is perhaps more that the condo chose to put uh, windows on the side of the building when uh, and, and this proposal actually has a lot line and a, a setback, so I'm supporting the motion. Okay. All in favor? Your application is approved. Um, Okay, the, I'm going to vet the 2.30 time slot before we take um, a five-minute break. So item number 31, 116 McPherson Avenue. Applicant, are there any people in opposition to 116 McPherson? Okay. Item 32, 16 Waller Avenue. Any opposition? Yeah, so yeah you're going to ask for deferral, right? Correct. So maybe I'll have you up. Uh, do you know if the people are on side? They're, the opposition's over there. Have you talked I'll, to them? To Can you speak to them during our break? Sure. Do you want to deferral now? Or? No. No, I'm just vetting. When we come sure. back, we'll do it first if you're in agreement. Okay? Sure. Okay. Item number 33, 262 Caledonia Road. Any opposition to Caledonia? No? Item number 34, 13 Millicent Street. Is there any opposition and is the applicant here? Okay. Item 35, 56 Coleridge Avenue. Any opposition for Coleridge? Okay. Item 36, 804 Dover Court Road. Any opposition? Yes. I'm sorry? Okay. Um, are you in opposition or? Okay. Can you also go have a conversation and then we'll deal with the deferral if you're in agreement, okay? Are, are th is that the applicant? Or is She's the applicant, the that's the opposition. opposition. You're the applicant, right? No. no. Um, Sorry. Is the applicant here? Okay, you're the applicant. Can you have a conversation with those two people regarding potential deferral? Okay. Um, where am I now? 37 Coleridge. Okay, is there anyone here in opposition to Coleridge? We have a question. We have a question. So, can you, we'll stand it down. If you can have a conversation outside the room with the applicant, please. Item number 38, 49 Kerr Road. Is there anyone in opposition for Kerr? Item number 39, 143 Heath Street East. Any, any opposition? Okay, there you go. Yeah, over there. If you can also go outside the room and have a conversation, that'd be great. Okay, can you put your hands up again for, for Heath Street? Okay. So there's your applicant. If you can step outside and have a conversation. Item number 40, 64 Fairside. Anybody in opposition for Fairside? Item number 41, 783 Salmon Avenue. Anyone in opposition? Okay. Item 42, 130, Amelia Street. Anyone in opposition? Yes? Okay, so are you in opposition? Can you also go and have a conversation, please? 
Item number 43, 950 DuPont Street. Anyone in opposition for 950 DuPont? Okay, I'm also going to vet the 3.30 time slot since we're running way behind here. So, 97 Yardley Avenue. Is the applicant here? Is there anyone in opposition? Okay, there you go. Also, have a conversation outside the room, please. Item number 45, 81 Oriel Road. And any opposition? Okay, item number 46, 273 to 275 Vaughn Road. Applicant? Okay, item number 47, 28. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding it anyway. The applicant's not here. I haven't seen a hand go up. They're opposed though, right? Yeah, you're opposed, so I'll hold it anyway, but it would be nice if you could have a chat with the, op with the applicant, but I don't see a hand going up here. Okay, item 47, 282 Windermere Avenue. 47, 282 Windermere? I don't have an item 48. Okay, yes, 282 Windermere on the Okay, is there anyone, in, you're asking, is there anybody in opposition? Okay, no opposition. So we're holding. Let me go back here. Okay, we're holding 37, 90, uh, 39 Coleridge, 39, 143 Heath Street East, 42, 130 Amelia Street, number 44, 97 Yardley, as well as 46, 273 to 275 Vaughn Road. Okay, we'll be back at 10 after 4. Having fun yet? <laughs> <laughs> this is one hell of an agenda.
This is interesting. Well, it's, it's, it's way more. I get it. Yeah. Oh, really? I can't get it all in one. Did you go downstairs to get provisions? Yeah, I'm starving. Did you really? Well, I just got this. That's all he had. Do you want me to go get you some? Want some? Seems to me we might need breakfast for girls. Going off. You this know, doesn't go off. Yeah, Sylvia. 
I'm probably going to bring this to Michael's attention, but the internet, you're, yeah. we're constantly losing it, like constantly. I, I, like, it doesn't hold, you have to actually disconnect and reconnect constantly to go into Google Maps. Well, you know how you connect on the Wi-Fi? Oh, you're on this, you're on the staff one, right? Yeah, yeah. this one is horrible. We should go in it. Oh, so this dies every time you're not using it. You have to yeah. sign in. I've had to sign in five if times. They, if they want to protect these, these laptops, they should put us on the city network. Because, so what happens is this, like, the Google map stays up, right? And then what happens, it's not doing it, you get like a, a thing here on the internet and it's gone and the only way that you can get back in is to disconnect because it's still showing... You mean sign out? No, it's still showing connected. Yeah. Right, so you have to actually disconnect from the Wi-Fi and connect. reconnect it. And it's, I've done it at least 10, 10 to 15 times. The whole day. It's constant, it's ridiculous. And I've had to sign in five times. Okay. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're ready for 116 McPherson Avenue. So panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, correspondence in support from 111 McPherson Avenue. We have five form letters in support from McPherson and Roxborough addresses. And we have opposition from several addresses on McPherson. Thank you. This has changed, right? Oh, okay, so there is opposition? Uh, no, Madam Chair. No, okay. I'm, I'm looking there, I'm thinking, yeah. I missed the hold. We, we, we do have a commitment to make sure that we request the plans are substantially in accordance with. So the, okay. the applicant and Mr. Wengel with the neighbors have worked together to, in, um, frankly, a very productive discussion. We thank them for that to reach the resolution that's on the plans they in front of you. On these plans. They are. I do have to highlight some changes to the notice for the committee, if that's okay. Uh, the floor space index would be reduced. So the variance one, yeah. it would be reduced from 1.14 to 1.0302. Um, oh, it's zero 03. Can we say 1.03 and, and is that all right if we round down? Um, variance two. What about the square meters? Uh, Mr. Wingle, can you do the that? It's same on here as, as we have in the notice. Well, it just says one times the area of the lot. No, but that's not the area of the lot. Uh, okay, I'll have to get you have to, yeah, thanks. Okay. We, we will get that and make sure we have it for you. Um, variance two is... I have a handwritten one. 197, so sorry, so the, the 217.35 goes to 197.18 square meters. Okay. Thank you. Variance two, uh, it's a minor change, but we should make it. Um, the depth is, is not 16.05, it's actually 16.01. But just to be correct, we should make that change if that's acceptable. The east side yard setback has actually increased slightly. Uh, so from 0.25 to 0.3, so the wall's further away from the, um, from the property line. So it's a mitigating change, not a, an aggravating change. So variance three, the east side yard setback would no longer be 0.25, it'd be 0.3. And then I'm in the committee's hands on variance four. As, as drafted, it's actually missing two words that are in the zoning bylaw that we would prefer just to have included, just to make it clear in terms of what the zoning provision says. It doesn't change the number of the variances, but I think it just got missed in terms of the zoning examiner translating it over. In the words, in the second line where it says dwelling units in those main walls, between in and those, we should add one of. You're deleting no as well? No, the no should stay. 
okay. Yeah, sorry, the no should stay. So it's where you've got no openings to dwelling units in one of those main walls. So it's, it's, the, it's the opposing main walls where you've got no openings in both, you're at two, when you've got an opening in one, you're at five and a half. When, if you've got an opening in both, you're at 11. In this case, we've got an opening in one. So the, so the way the bylaws say, well, you've got no openings in one of those walls, we've got no openings in one of those walls. So it technically should be 5.5, but the variance would change at 1.45. So these revisions are to address the concerns that I read for 118 and 120, is that, or? In particular, yes, and my, and my understanding, I think, is that on that basis, the neighborhood is, is then also satisfied, but, but I can let the neighbors confirm that for you, okay. Madam Chair. And other than that, I'd be happy to take questions on the plan. Uh, Mr. Wengel, on the site plan on page three, as usual, has included um, uh, the building, uh, the different floors, the red being what's permitted, the green in terms of what's existing, and I'm happy to walk through it, but I think through the discussions with the neighbor, there's been a good compromise reached. Could you just show us what you've changed on the plan? Based on, we've got most of this, but what did you change? You want so, so one of the changes has been um, to increase the space that's between 118 and 116. So where there's that, that gap between the facing townhouses uh, to try and open that up. Uh, Mr. Wengel's just pulling out the balance of the plans. In general, what's happened is things have been carved back. So what Mr. Wengel's done on the plans is marked in blue the area that's been then carved back from the length of the dwellings. And so overall, it's been to reduce the depth or length into the rear yard, um, open up uh, some of the views that the neighbor had asked to have opened up. Uh, and that's, is that the second floor, Mr. Wengel? And then there's the third floor. And then that would- Was there to the site plan? You were making reference to the site plan, were you not? I was in terms of, so Mr. Mr. Wengel, if you go back. So there, there, is, a, there is a small increase on that uh, west side for that rear piece. We haven't shown that in blue, sir, but that's opened up slightly that gap. And then the, the bulk of the FSI has come off the end on the second and third floors. And sir, on the site plan, for example, um, two of the two of the I think sort of interests or issues raised by the neighbor, and again, um, I, I don't want to speak too much for, her, but one was at the back pulling back the second floor, uh, so that uh, the first story addition at the end of 118 can have better views to the east, um, uh, and that was that was able to be accommodated. And there's a window then in 118. And the third floor coming back, um, there's an opportunity then to get some more light into that window by pulling the third floor back. So those are two of the interests addressed through the revisions. You said that you wanted the, you were open to having the plans placed in the decision, but I, unless I'm missing it, I don't have floor plans. I don't think it has to be floor plan, sir, but if it was site plan and elevations. <laughs> floor plans? Okay, so I'm, what is it you're hoping to have attached this condition? Yeah, yeah. Build? The, the dimensions of the second and the third. Okay, we don't have those. These are the ones I just put up on the board. Oh, okay. okay. They're not in this package, though. These are the ones that need to be The request is for a full plan, sir, that's fine. That shows the reduction. Okay, okay, because I didn't have those. Okay, good enough, thanks. Okay. So those are the ones you've got? No, we don't. No, but but we can tie it as long as you have it. So there'll be the plan submitted today to us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Two. Can we maybe hear from the um, opposition Absolutely. who's now on side, and then if there are any questions, we'll, we'll have. Thank you, Madam Chair. If you can, you can you come to the mic? If if yeah, thanks.
Thank you very much. Um, we. Um, I just need your name and address. Oh, sorry. My name's Karen Gorsline. I'm at 118 McPherson. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm pleased to be here today to speak to you, um, and also pleased to be supporting uh, this uh, particular situation. We did not speak uh, to the uh, to the owner and to the application until December the second, so we're very late in the day here. But we're, we had some very productive and constructive discussions at that point, and worked really hard. And together, we were able to find some solutions that would work for both of us. So um, as a result. I can summarize uh, um, some of the things that we were looking for and uh, changed. Uh, the FSI was reduced to uh, 103. The second floor back wall projection uh, is just uh, two feet nine inches and it is uh, notched in on the side, sort of like a stylized bay window. The third floor back wall uh, is only an increase of 1.27 and their small deck stays as proposed, so that's a much better situation in terms of light and view. Uh, the chimney, which was an encroachment on the separation, is now within the building and also it was uh, going to be mid-deck on our property and it's now been brought back in south toward the, uh, toward the front of the building and more aligned to where our chimneys are and so it's much less intrusive. And the separation uh, as proposed is 1.45 without encroachment. And I believe that was also in the, in the previous, uh, earlier plans. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's an, a new change. The change was it was no longer encroached upon. Um, so those are the reasons why, um, in terms of 118, I'm the adjacent property, uh, we felt that you know the uh, applicant had made serious um, attempts to uh, be sensitive to the context. So looking at both the decrease in the FSI and the um, way the massing was developed and how sensitive it was to the impacts on prop other properties, and also in terms of the pattern of development within the neighborhood, which is very important in our, our street. Um, uh, so I'm in a position now to support this development as long as it is as per the plans, full set of plans, and built to the plans. Um, the other thing is there were other, uh, we have uh, another neighbor, uh, 120, it is a townhouse, so there's two other townhouse neighbors, and they are now in support as well. Um, and I have been in touch with all, there, there were seven other letters of opposition. I have been in touch with all those neighbors, and I have emails from them saying that based on the changes, they no longer are in opposition, and I'd be happy to file those if you wish. Okay. Would Thank you like that? Sure. Okay. Um, panel members, do you have any questions of the speaker? No. no? Okay. I'll just take the letters if you have them handy. I don't have a letter for me or 120, but no. these are the other people who are present. No worries. You're on record Thank as you very much. having spoken. Okay, uh, Mr. Bronscale, I'm not sure there's anything to add right now. Um, panel members, do you have any questions? No. No? Okay. So we'll take it into committee. Okay. You have it? Okay. I don't have any questions, but I'm. Unless anybody else does, I'm prepared to bring a motion forward um, on the application as amended uh, with the changes that were just outlined. I'd like to bring a motion forward for approval. It's nice to see neighbors work together to try to resolve issues. Um, in this case, I think the, the recommended application fits within the context of the neighborhood and meets the four tests. So my motion is for approval and it's going to be subject to it being built substantially in accordance with the plans that were filed, showing the reductions. I don't know what the numbers of the plans are. The plans that just referred to. Okay, I'm motion seconded. motion to approve the application um, as amended um, and tying it to the plans submitted to the committee today. Moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? The application is approved. Okay, Mr. Barrett, my apologies. I should have had you up first, but it's been a long day. <laughs>
All right. So, did you do the uh, opposition agree to the deferral? Are they still? Uh, yeah, we're we're in favor. Of that also the adjacent neighbor and um, a few others have written in who have tried to reach out to. So, deferral is certainly in order to address some of these concerns and revisit this uh, in the new year once we've had a chance to compromise. Okay, and you're in agreement, ma'am. I am in agreement. Um, sure. Very briefly, yeah. uh, if, if I can have you come up to the mic. Yeah. Uh, my name is. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Veronica Wynn. I'm the uh, president of the Swansea Area Ratepayers Association, and it, this just came to our attention yesterday. And we, at the ex our executive meeting last night, we. Uh, we, we found this to be excessive, and we read the objection letters of the neighborhood. So we haven't been in touch with him. So uh, we are glad to be able to uh, that there is going to be a deferral. And we would ho we ha I have worked with uh, with the applicant here to say that uh, he will meet with us. At the agreement on condition that he would come to talk to us and include us as part of the discussion because we consider this to be. A, a duplex rather than a, a residential home, and so we would advise on the proper zoning to go through. So, if that's okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chairman, I'd like to move a deferral um, of this application to allow the applicant to negotiate with the neighbors and then return with perhaps some compromise. <coughs> I have a motion to defer, moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Mr. Solomon. All in favor? Okay. And that's including recirculation fees. Yeah. Sure. Thank okay. you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. Same to you. And now, uh, 804 Dover Court, item 36, um, to the deferral request only. So uh, is there an agreement on a deferral? If not, you'll go back in the hold queue. Madam Chair, members of the committee, good afternoon. My name is John Owen, acting as agent on behalf of the Del Monte family. We have met briefly with the neighbors and it's agreed to have a deferral, if that's uh, uh, in keeping with your wishes. And uh, we're looking for, I believe, a time that's after the new year and perhaps the sometime in March, if that's convenient. Um, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, it's a what, maximum of three to six months, so I don't know if you can accommodate March or not. Yeah, so when you come back and with whatever revisions possibly or whatever you're coming back with, then talk to staff about potentially getting a date in March. Okay. Will there be a time frame then established now or? Well, the time frame is, is three to six months, right? Okay. It depends when you have something that we can look at. So I'll contact the new okay. adjustment. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And you're the opposition and you're in agreement with the deferral, you as well? Can we request that the tenants of the building get notified? Um, well, the city has a set notification area, so if there are people that you feel you want included in this, then you should approach them yourself. Yeah. We are tenants of 804 Court. Yeah, we own the city notifies the uh, the building the the owner. So if you want to get other tenants involved, and assuming the applicant is having a meeting, you should work together, and you should be approaching the tenants or throw a flyer or something in the in the so door. Three to six months. I'm sorry, three to six months. Okay, but coordinate with the applicant. All right, do, can I have a motion to the deferral? I bring a motion forward for deferral with the required fees, circulation fee. Okay. Second. Motion to defer, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor, and that's including fees, recirculation fees. Okay. Um, item number 33, 262 Caledonia Road. Okay, panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and no additional correspondence. I just need your name. Uh, my name is Murray Fern. I'm representing the owners of uh, 262 Caledonia Road. Okay, panel, um, can I have you folks please um, discuss outside the room? Um, panel members, do you need a presentation? Can we go straight to questions? I just have a question. Okay, one question, Mr. Niffel. Have you had any discussions with the planning department about this application? Uh, yes, we did. I had a discussion with the planning department and they indicated to us that they would like us to uh, do some planting along the north wall of the um, retaining wall that goes to the basement, which 
uh, is shown on the plan there on the application. So subject to that, they're not objecting to you having a friend. No, not at all. That was the only conversation I had, and we showed that, and uh, that was there. We've, we've indicated planting on our uh, site plan. Any other questions? Yeah, are there other walkouts in the area? <laughs> it's funny you should ask that. Uh, there are quite a few. The owners took a walk around there, and there's like f over 50 oh, okay. other houses with walkouts. It's probably a planning is no problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, we'll take it into committee. Comments, a motion? That's what I'm wondering. Is this, is this the planting that they talked about? Well, it doesn't screen it from the street, though. You said uh, no, they weren't concerned about sorry screening from the street. She was just concerned about uh, screening from the neighbor to the north. Okay, and that's the planting that you've got on your seat. Yes, yes. How high is that planting? Um, well, um, at this point, I don't know, but we can, I know, like right now, there is, there is planting along that side. I, I have a picture that I can show. Oh, it's okay. I'm just, but, like my calling, I'm trying to figure out <clears throat> if we should make it subject to this drawing, but the drawing doesn't really say. Um, no. No, there's nothing on this. I can... This is the planting that we have for now. Our, our access is going to be sort of. Oh, so see. It's, it's all going to be hidden, even without sure. what we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're three feet high. Yeah. 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 Okay, any other questions? No. All right, we're back in committee. Comments and or a motion. Well, Madam Chairman, it doesn't sound like there's, from my perspective, a need to put in the planting as a condition because it's already there um, and he's not going to take it out. Um, so I would recommend, or I'd like to bring forward a motion of approval uh, without condition. Okay, hey, motion to approve the application. Moved by Mr. Nickfull, seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? The application is approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Item number 34, 13 Millicent Street. Yes. I hang on. <laughs> Item 37. Coleridge. Okay. Um, we have before us copy of plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and no other correspondence. Just need your name. Michael Scott, agent for the owner. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation? Can we go straight to questions? No questions? Okay, we'll take it into committee then. I am prepared to bring a motion for approval on this. I'm, in terms of if I read the plans, um, it looks like the addition is similar in depth to adjacent neighbors. Uh, I feel that there's no adverse impact, so my motion is for approval without any conditions. Okay, motion to approve, moved by Ms. Valentini. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Salomon, all in favor? Your application is approved. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number 35, 56 Coleridge Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a plan showing the streetscape of Coleridge, covering letter from Shen Mei Liu, the applicant. We have reports from community planning, tree protection, and plan review, plus 12 form letters in support. And if I could have your name. Yeah, this is uh, Gabriel Guiducci, I'm the agent. Okay, the panel. Owners. Panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? No presentation. All right, any questions? Mm -hmm. You're Mr. aware? There's a, sorry. No, I was just going to ask if you're aware of the planning report. Uh, yes, we are. So you're okay with that? Uh, I'm okay with the condition, yes. Yeah, okay. Madam Chairman, there was good streetscape analysis included with this application, which made its valuation much easier. Thank you. Um, and it appears that there's been some discussion with planning. I'd like to uh, uh, bring forward a motion of approval subject to forestry condition number three and the um, aforementioned planning condition, which is to 
basically um, um, instruct the dwelling substantially in accordance with the plans that are on file with us. Okay, motion to approve with the conditions outlined by Mr. Nipfold. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you, committee. Chair. Okay. Item I forestry condition number yeah, three. Yeah, you did. Item number 36, 804 Dover Court Road was deferred. And we'll go to item number 37, which is 39 Coleridge Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey site plan for floor plans and elevations and no further correspondence. Could I have your name, please? This is Parisa Amiri. I'm the architect on the file. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation? Can we go to questions? Item 37. Okay. Do we, does anyone have any questions? No. No? Go ahead. Okay, I, I note that there are many two-story houses on the street, uh, including w one on the abutting side. So I, I do believe that this is uh, compatible with what is the character of the area and that the variances are minor. And I would uh, bring forward a motion to approve the requested variances, and there is no conditions. Second the motion. Okay, motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Salomon, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Your applications. Approved. Thank you. Item number 38, 49 Kerr's, Kerr Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Planning rationale from Jeffrey Moot. Staff report from Tree Protection and Plan Review, as well as five form letters in support from residents on Kerr Road. Hi. Can we have your name, please? Jeffrey Moot, Principal Moot Architect, the agent on behalf of the owner. Okay. Uh, panel members, do you need a presentation? No. Do you have any questions? No? no. Madam Chairman, if there are no questions, I'd like to bring forward a motion of approval subject to forestry condition number one. I think this is a very minor application and clearly meets the test for variance. I agree. I'll second. Okay. Motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Nipfel. Seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you very much. Item 39 is held. Item number 40, 64 Fairside Avenue. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Steve Ellis. I'm co-agent with yeah, Amanda Tran, co-agent. Um, okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have 15 photographs of similar minor variances in the neighborhood. We have a staff report from community planning and we, which is asking that the lot coverage of the proposed new dwelling exclusive of accessory structures shall be limited to 35.4%. We have support from three people, one on Coxwell, two on Fairside, and we have opposition from 61 and 63, 63 Fairside. So, sorry, can I have your name again? Yes, it's uh, Steve Ellis, a co-agent for the owner, and this is Amanda Tran, who's a co-agent, also an owner of the property. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation, or can we go to questions? And you're aware of the planning condition, and you're okay with it, right? Well, uh, well, I just read it. So it's basically the lot coverage of the proposed new dwelling exclusive of the accessory structures shall be limited to 35.4%. Uh, not sure if that if the building can be constructed in that, uh, within that framework. Yes, we're in favor of it, but I'm, I'm well, not Well, sure. I'm assuming that like the lot coverage variance includes the garage. So they've taken the actual coverage for the house and calculated it at that. So you were requesting 43%, yes. which included the ancillary building. That's yes. right. If you took the ancillary building off, what would you have? Uh, I believe it would be it'd probably fit within the framework that planning suggested. Right. So that's just, that's, that's how they number. They just don't want the garage, basically. Yeah, yeah that's all they're saying, they that, that you can't go bigger on the yes. house. In you other words, yeah, you can't go 43% on the house is what they're saying. Exactly, yes. We're completely yeah. agreeing with that. Okay. Yes, That's very reasonable and practical. Okay. Any other questions? No. 
prepared to make a motion. Okay. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion for approval of the application. I think, it, in my view, it meets the four tests, and it's going to be subject to the conditions that we just discussed set out in the planning memo. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve um, with the planning conditions moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Okay, your application is approved. Item number 41. Um, okay. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have a covering letter from James and Shauna Owen, the applicants, and we have support, uh, actually eight form letters in support from residents on Salmon and Woodmount Avenue as well as 300 Queensdale Avenue. So if we can have your name, please. Uh, James Owen, applicant and owner. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go straight to questions? Okay. I'm good, yeah. I was just refreshing my memory okay. of the law coverage, but it's already substantially better. So. I have some comments. Um, I note that there are many two-story houses on the street. Uh, many of the variances are for the existing condition and thus aren't, aren't for the new, um, new development. And so I, I believe that the requested variances are minor, and I would move uh, approval of the uh, variances with no conditions. I would second the motion. I also would note that you've got support from the neighbors on either side of you. Okay. I have a motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Salomon, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Applications approved. Thanks very much. So, are we still on the 230 time slot? Yeah. Based on this, okay. This, this, yeah. The Item 42 is held. Mm -hmm. Item 43 is 950 DuPont Street. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plans, and floor plans, two photographs of the subject property, covering letter from David Riley, the agent, um, copies of previous C of A decisions affecting the property. Uh, we have a staff report from the acting manager, traffic planning and transportation services. If we can have your name, please. Yes, my name is David Riley. I'm the agent. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation or do you want to go to questions? Madam Chairman, I, I would appreciate some discussion of the parking. I don't understand it because oh, numbers, there's a chart in there that has one set of numbers and then the covering letter includes another set of numbers and I'm a bit confused. I'll help straighten that out. Um, actually, and I have a couple handouts, I might as well just do that now. Um, one of them is um, a letter basically in response to transportation services um, comments, which we say that we accept their, their proposed um, recommended approval and their condition. And it also attaches a review of, an, of a property that's very nearby on the screen there. Um, on the left side of the screen is 1020 DuPont, which is located about 75 meters to the west of the subject property. This was one of the properties that we identified I'll get into the reason why to accommodate off-site parking. Um, and we have a confirmation now from zoning that there is a surplus of parking there and there will be an ability to accommodate parking there. Okay, so I have a letter here. Thank you. Thank you. While I'm handing stuff out, I also have a letter from Councillor Bylaw's office, um, just um, uh, which, which says that she supports the application, which I'll also hand. So, um, just to clarify, so yes. to make best use of the time, my concern had to do with whether there's 16 or 17 spaces and how they're allocated, because those two numbers are, 
I don't know where that came from. Yes, so on the, um, on the plans itself, there's a parking chart. The parking chart says that um, 16 spaces are required um, for the artist studio use. However, according to the zoning examiner, 17 spaces are required. So the zoning, um, the uh, public hearing notice and the requested variance is actually for a reduction to, to, for the artist studio use from 17 spaces to two spaces to be provided based on site. On the zoning examiner's numbers. It's based on the zoning examiner's numbers, yes. And so um, essentially what we have here, we have a building which takes up basically the entire property. So you can see the yellow identified lands which are to the right of the building. That's essentially, th those are the adjacent property to the east. So the entire building essentially takes up the whole property. We have eight existing parking spots on the property. They're located where you see this. My thumb is. Mm -hmm. Six of those eight are required for the existing uses in the building. So this is why we have two, um, and the existing uses are um, uh, manufacturing and showroom use for a furniture um, showroom, essentially. Um, so we have two essentially surplus parking spaces on the property. There's no physical space to provide for any additional uh, parking spaces on the property. And so the re that's why the, the requested variance. Um, when we were putting this application forward, um, and which is for an artist studio use, which is in the portion of the building that you see right here, where my thumb is, this is essentially what the interior of the building looks like. So it's very tall space. The artist studio use is actually for um, a digi the digital projection of art. So the zoning examiner um, has said that this is an artist studio as opposed to an art artist gallery. Um, I will show you exactly what is proposed here, and I have a photo somewhere. Um, here we go. So you may have seen this on the news from a exhibit that just opened in Montreal. It's the Imagine Van Gogh exhibit. Um, so this is what is proposed exactly for this, for this property. So it's something that you need, very tall buildings. It needs to be in an industrial space. <laughs> Lots of height. Um, as you can see there, the, the height of the projections in relation to the people. Um, because it, uh, an artist's studio use, uh, it's a parking rate of one to 1 1.5 per 100 square meters, which is actually uh, more parking required than an art, an art gallery, if you're wondering. That's a 1.3 per 100 square meters use. So um, in terms of what's required here, that comparison is very similar. But if it was an art gallery, we'd actually require fewer spaces. But we wanted to say, OK, we can't physically provide for space on the property itself. But are there opportunities nearby to provide for off-site parking? Um, so we identified two properties. One of them, which is 1020 DuPont, which is located 75 meters to the west, is actually owned by the same building owner at uh, 950 DuPont. 1020 DuPont has, um, I believe, uh, 27 parking spaces, um, and 16 of those parking spaces are surplus. So essentially, the existing use at 1020 DuPont requires, um, I'm going to do the math in my head, 11 parking spaces, but 16 additional parking spaces exist there. So the city's transportation uh, department had recommended that within 300 meters, you provide for those additional 15 spaces that are needed somewhere. Um, and they need to be within the 300 meter radius of the site. Here we have a, um, a good example of a property that happens to be owned by the same owner where all of those spaces can be provided. And um, only 75 meters away. And so um, this was a good, a good opportunity to say this is where the parking can be provided. Additionally, um, the owner next door, which is why that property is highlighted, which is a self-storage facility with um, amp parking on the, both the east and the west sides of the self-storage building. Um, the western parking lot was identified as having also potential ability to accommodate some parking, but we haven't heard specifically how many spots 
could be accommodated there, so I, I haven't addressed those. But I just wanted to bring to the committee's attention in the letter that I handed out to you that the zoning examiner um, just yesterday has confirmed that there are 16 surplus parking spaces there. And so we should be able to satisfy the city's condition. And um, we accept the city's, con the, the recommended condition to be attached to this decision because there are also some other elements in ha including having um, a lease sign to ensure that the city is satisfied that parking can actually be provided on that property. Um, in my planning letter um, that I submitted, I also um, indicated proximity to transit. It's about um, probably about a 10 to 12 minute walk from Ossington subway station, but there's also several bus routes here. Um, I think, in my opinion, this is a really good site um, to have this use. There aren't too many areas that are these industrial buildings that are so well served by transit where you'd be able to provide um, this use. So in my opinion, I think it's, it's appropriate. And given that we can provide for parking very nearby, I believe that the, the intent of the bylaw is satisfied, particularly okay, on a site we're where- eight and a half minutes. So no problem. I can get you to, I think- Yeah, I think I'm wrapped I think up. we get the gist. You, yep. you want us to support it because you think it's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you go. Okay, panel members, do you have any other questions? Okay, um, so we'll take it into committee for a decision. I, I'm satisfied that um, <clears throat> variances in question meet the test of the four tests for minor variance. In particular, I am happy to support a motion for approval. You've demonstrated that the parking is not an issue because there is it is in close proximity to transit, and in fact, that you're prepared to um, comply with the requirement of transportation services in terms of providing off-site parking within 300 meters. So my motions for approval, subject to the recommendation or the conditions set out in the transportation services. Okay, motion to approve, including the transportation condition, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Niffle. All in favor? Thank you for favor. the initiative in solving the problem. Yeah. It's good. Thank you very much. Did you vote yes? I did. Yep. We're good with the condition. No. Okay, thank you. Right. No, you don't. The off site parking. Okay. Oh, do we need to say that? No, we... no, that they would work that out if they can't if they can't. But if we yeah, recommend but... the condition that Right, we yeah. did the off site right here, parking. Right that's all we did. Okay. So you that's... don't want the I don't think you need it. He solved the problem. I don't know if they need it. Um, well, they've already solved it. 75 meter proximity. That was that was if they hadn't solved it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, item number 39, 143 Heath Street. You're still discussing? Discussing and trying to come up with no problem. We'll go to 40. Let us know when you're ready, okay? We'll go to 42. Okay, that's fine. All right, so let's go to item number 42, 130 Amelia Street. If I can have the opposition sit on the side here. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a covering letter from Leo Mieles, the agent, email correspondence from the assistant planner, community planning, as well as uh, Heritage Preservation Services. We have correspondence in opposition from 126 and 128 Amelia Street. What happened to your opposition? Uh, good afternoon. I, I believe one member of the opposition is, is here. The, okay. the other. Can you sit up here? Can you come and sit up at the front? Uh, the other, I, I believe, um, is satisfied with the conditions based on a, a conversation with the owner. Uh, Li Lillian, I, I believe, is her name, and hey, she's not here. Okay. Ma'am, are you still opposed? Are you still opposed to the app? You are, so you'll be speaking. Okay. So can we have a brief presentation, please? Yes, of, of course. And you're Stephen Flaming? Uh, no. No? What's your name? My name is Leo Mielis. I'm, I'm the architect yeah. and uh, representative for Stephen and Andrea Flaming. Okay. Um, so I, I'd just like to uh, briefly describe uh, uh, the project. It's a two-story addition 
at the back of, uh, of 130 Amelia Street, um, three bedroom uh, house in total. And the, the addition uh, is as wide as the existing condition and or its proposed, uh, uh, the proposed addition is as wide as the existing house and the proposed depth is as deep as the existing house to the east, which is 132 um, uh, Amelia Street. And the picture I have up is uh, from the sidewalk. It's a historical property. I believe it's from 1879. And we are not uh, modifying the front of the house at all. We are leaving it as it is, um, with the addition entirely at the back. And, and, and we have... Uh, Toronto Heritage Preservation Services uh, on side with uh, our proposal. Um, I'd just like to uh, switch uh, images. Uh, that, that is an image of the back of the property. And I, I, I'd just like to mention a little bit about the family. Um, they've recently moved into the neighborhood. They're a young family with uh, two young kids, four years old, four months old, and their existing uh, two-bedroom house it isn't really adequate for their needs, so they, they need to expand for a, a, a growing family. Now, um, the existing context is, of course, Cabbage Town. It is an old neighborhood, and um, if, if I can point out in the picture, the, to, towards the left is 132 uh, Amelia Street, and, and the wall, um, I'll, I'll just point to it, right here, that is the, the uh, proposed depth of uh, uh, the addition. So it'll be as long as the next door neighbor, and there are other houses along the street that have created depths uh, uh, or similar depths. Um, I would like to go through the four tests, if I may, uh, quickly, um, in relation to the um, uh, proposal. And if I can just bring up, forgive me, the drawings. So, yes? Correct, that is 128. And, and there is, there is a, a, a gap, you can see the gap between the, the two houses. So, uh, are the variances minor? Um, now, the changes proposed uh, uh, seek to build an addition that extends the existing width, as, as I mentioned, um, which does not trigger a, a variance, I would like to add, and to match the building depth of the existing house. And hence, in, in the context of the immediate neighborhood, it is minor as it, it is reflective of the, the existing uh, environment. Um, if I can speak to the, the appropriateness, uh, is, is it appropriate for the development of the site, test number two? Um, we are maintaining the use as a single family dwelling, uh, uh, and then therefore it's, it's consistent with the, the neighborhood's designation. Uh, test number three, is the variance within the intent of the official plan? And, and just to, to quote from the official plan, um, that physical changes must be sensitive, gradual, and generally fit the existing physical character. Um, and hence, be, because it's following these, these uh, um, general physical patterns, uh, we, we believe it's appropriate for uh, um, the context and, and, and for the street. Um, Test number four is the variance within the intent of the zoning bylaw, and uh, the variances requested are within the intent of the one-time density designation. We're, we're actually a little under. I, I believe we're at 0.93. So by virtue of expanding uh, on two stories, um, the existing width and to the neighboring depth, uh, we, we are not triggering um, uh, the setback. We're not triggering uh, the density, just the two uh, variances. And if I could end with, with one uh, um, 
comment about the variants requesting the downspout. So I'll just show the, the site plan. Now, I'll just point uh, here is the, the existing uh, facade, oh, the existing depth of the neighbor at 132. Here is a little indent here where we're setting back the second floor. The importance of, of that little setback on the second floor is such that it provides light for the existing bedroom, because otherwise, without a window, you, you couldn't call a bedroom a bedroom. Um, so it brings in light towards uh, one of the existing bedrooms. We can have small windows uh, at the washrooms, and there's also a skylight going down in, into the kitchen. So that little inset is doing a lot of work for us, but we need to shed the water from that roof, and hence the downspout that uh, I should point out is, is finding its way uh, um, towards the front and turning into the property. So the water goes, you, you know, Can lands. I um, ask you to wrap up. You're at six Sorry. and a half minutes. My, my apologies. If, if I can make one final comment, yep. uh, and, and it's regarding the, the uh, dialogue that's taken place with the neighbor, and, and I know that, that she will make some comments, um, but my understanding is that the, the owners, uh, Stephen Flaming in particular, uh, did have a dialogue back in August regarding this proposal, and in fact, it's a bit of an aside, at an earlier stage, we had a third story, and because there was resistance, we completely got rid of it. And so um, that, that was a very early part of the, of the design. We are not requesting that. Okay, we'll have you back after the, um, the neighbor states Okay, great, thanks. If it is more appropriate for the owner to speak. I, no, it's, no. It's, it's like five minutes and you've, you're at over seven. So that's for one or two people. Like for the Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, yes, you're up. I don't have anything. No I problem. Have this, and I've just got one copy. This Why don't you put it on the overhead if, if you I'm need help? Sure how to do that. The staff can help you. Or ask oh. the applicant yeah. who knows how to do it, too. Or the... Uh, just lay it on top. Turn it. There. Yeah, that's it. There. Perfect. There. Oh, very You're good. on camera. Yeah, so we just need your name and address before you sure. start. Sure, I'm Suzanne Hudson. I live at 128 Amelia. Okay. And um, I have lived in Cabbage Town for 20 years. Um, I've got a family history of many of us living in Cabbage Town. And I've lived in this particular house for 12 years. And my new neighbors, who I was very mad, happy, I should, I'm saying now mad, happy to meet. Uh, they moved in uh, in November of last year. So in the summer, um, Stephen, who I know, I don't really know his wife, mentioned to me that they were thinking of doing an addition, and he quickly showed me, he had his little four-year-old with him, the addition. And in this part of Cabbage Town, Amelia is the nicest street. It's mostly composed of s small semis and, um, and cottages. So um, when he showed me his plans, the only thing I saw was the third floor addition, which had a deck and would overlook my, my property. So I said, oh, I'm not crazy about that. So he said, not to worry. I just want to know what you thought. Um, I'll take it back to the architect who's going to come off. So when this happened um, in November, I was completely taken aback. I didn't know that he was proceeding with a plan for an addition. He went away on holidays with his wife for three weeks. And um, I, the first I knew was when I got the, um, the package from the Committee of Adjustments. So I'm not a lawyer. I hired an architect, and she took me through the plans. And she had many concerns. She said, especially between the property, it's so narrow there, and where are they going to excavate? It looks like they're going to excavate. Actually, they're going to excavate within two feet of that particular structure there that you can see. Now, I didn't put that on. It was put on years ago, but it's enclosed stairs to my basement, and there's a foundation wall from the main foundation on the one side. On the other side is the foundation for my kitchen and my family room. So I think that's awfully close. So she was concerned about that. 
And um, I had some, we had questions, lots of questions. And between uh, November 18th and December the 9th, we sent um, five emails to the owner and his architect asking questions, and they did not respond to one. So initially I thought, well, I guess I can accept the, um, uh, the proposal for um, the depth exception for it to be 19 versus 17, because gee, they've got two kids and they should have an addition, I'm all for that. But then I had questions, is it gonna go right to my fence? I have a young dog. And I walk him up this uh, laneway all the time and also take my, my, uh, my uh, garbage bins out. I had lots of questions. No answers came back. So the first one, on November 27th, I said I agreed to the variance one about the depth. Um, and obviously, I agreed also to the um, variance two about the downspouts. Actually, at the time, I didn't know that it was all the water that's going to come from the roof. But I understand from the architect that that um, rainwater has to go onto their property, not mine, and that's a bylaw. So that's why I accepted that one. Um, but then when we hadn't heard from them sort of weeks later, I thought, gee, I'm really nervous now that they're going right to my property line. I have no idea what they're doing. So I'm going to accept the, the depth with the condition of a 1.5 foot um, setback, which I understand is very common. Um, and I, once again, I heard nothing back. So um, I also have two other um, concerns about, um, and this is all setback related, so maybe, maybe that's not concerned here, or of concern here. But also, if they also, um, we're able to do right up to my property line. We have a, I have a very narrow, we all have, ours, our lots are only 15 feet wide. Um, it would be an 18 foot high uh, wall, brick wall, overlooking my garden, which would completely um, shut out any of the uh, sunshine to that small garden. And, um, oh, the other thing too, well, I guess it was this, about the, um, um, the excavation, I, I'm very worried about that. I called a lawyer and he said to me, oh, they're definitely gonna crack your foundation. So I'm very concerned about that. So I think I have to stick with my original, um, or my, my resubmission, which is the variance is fine, the two variances are fine with me, but the first variance about the coverage is, is conditional on a 1.5 foot setback. I think I have to have that. Can I clarify, is this, sure. is this your property? Yeah. Um, this, property, well, this is your stair. Yeah, you see that? Is that your property line there? Well, this is the walkway. Yeah. And is that right away, or is it all on your property? All it's, your um, it's half a foot on his property on that side. We see where I say half, and then it's 1.75 uh, on my side. So it's almost two feet on my side, and it's half a foot on his side. Um, no, his property line, see where I've got the black line coming down? That's his property line. And then my property line is that one. But it's see, line. yeah, yeah. And it looks wide, but it's only 24 and a half inches across. The whole thing where it crosses is only 24 and a half inches. Pardon me? Well, I'm saying um, he owns six inches and I own almost two, two, yeah. But my concern there is when they talk about a variance of, of um, seven inches, which is what they're proposing, is they're then <coughs> gonna be with, within, two, um, uh, within two feet of, of that structure, which has hey, foundation wall. There is no variance for the structure, it's just for the, no, 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 I'm for the downspouts. So yeah, there's no, no variance that. for for coming any closer on the side lot line. It's well because the that no, there is no variance for the structure to come closer. It's only the downspouts and the depth and the depth. That's it. There's nothing else here. So 
I'm saying I have problems with the depth irrespective of everything. Okay, so you, you don't support the variances? I don't. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, panel members? Do you have any other questions? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Mielis, if you can um, speak to some of the concerns expressed as related to the variances before us. Yes. Uh, can, I, can I speak from this mic? Sure. sure. As long as it's on. Is the red light on? Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, just very roughly, um, I, I'll attempt to, uh, apologies, very roughly, I will attempt to show where the property line is. It's, some, it's somewhere in between uh, with um, my clients having a little less of the laneway and 128 having a little more. Um, and so our, our setback of the uh, west facade is noted at 186 millimeters, or 19 centimeters, uh, to round off. Um, and so we, we, we are mindful that the shoring, excavation, and underpinning um, will need to take place uh, within the, the boundaries of, of my client's property, as well as we will engage a structural engineer without question in order to um, uh, come up with, a, with the optimal design. Um, and so uh, notwithstanding the technical solution, it doesn't change the setback that we are proposing, which is the exact width of the existing uh, building. Um, correct, correct. We're, we're, just, we're just extending uh, the, the existing uh, house. Um, if I if I can speak to the to the uh, question of of light, um, I would I would suggest that two story buildings are are commonplace um, uh, in the downtown core and and also on the street and and this immediate area, and that um, by virtue of of not asking for any additional height that were allowed. Um, and and uh, by the fact that we're we're matching the neighbor's depth, um, uh, we we don't see a significant issue, and and find it in keeping um, with with the acceptable uh, uh, notion of of minor variance. Um, I, I notice there's a lot of additions, varying in depths and proximity. So w would you say that your variance number two is pretty much happening throughout the neighborhood in terms of proximity with the additions? Because when I look at the aerial view here on Google Maps, there, there are a lot of additions on this street, varying in depth and height. OK, I, yeah, you're not, sorry. What I've put up on the screen is an aerial photograph taken from the city of Toronto zoning, okay. which has the, uh, uh, helpful feature where you can toggle uh, towards the aerial view. This is a little superior to Google because it's taken in winter, so it doesn't show all the trees. Okay. But you, you can see 130 here. Uh, uh, there's several properties around here that are quite deep, and it looks to me like we're, we're simply uh, proposing um, what others have done before us. I, I can bring that closer to you if you want. The, the resolution wasn't great. It's okay. We have the Google Maps up, so it's pretty much the same. Okay, any other questions, panel members? Okay, we'll bring it into committee. Any comments um, and or a motion? Um, well, I'm sympathetic to the neighbors' uh, concerns in terms of setback from the property line. We don't have a variance in this case for setback from the property line. I know you indicated you'd wished it to be 1.5 meters from the property line where the addition is, but <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, I know you've indicated you had concerns about the setback of the proposed addition to uh, the property line and to your property line. Um, 
When I look at the variances before us, we do not have a variance for setback for the proposed addition from the property line. So um, I, I feel like my hands are tied in terms of that. Um, the, the variances we do have are simply for building depth, notwithstanding the variance for the downspout. Um, and often we see many other variances combined with that. We don't have a variance for floor space index that it's going over. Um, you know, we don't have height variances. We do have the, the depth variance, but um, in my view, that matches what is going on in the surrounding neighborhood, particularly the uh, attached house at um, 132. Um, this applicant is simply seeking to match what uh, the attached neighbor is doing. So in my view, I feel that this, this proposal is uh, in keeping with what's going on and it meets the four tests. I don't know if my colleagues have any other comments. Anything to add or are we okay for a motion? I would concur with those comments, and so I would uh, like to bring forward a motion to uh, approve the requested variances. Okay. Um, um, I agree with my colleagues. I think the issue that the objector has has to do with construction. Um, the applicant has indicated a, um, an intention of hiring a professional to supervise that construction. Uh, oh, sorry. That's, Maybe just no, it's on. Um, I have sympathy with your concern, but as indicated, and I agree with my colleagues, what we have before us are, var are variances that don't deal with side yard setback. Um, so we're not dealing with that. The applicant has indicated an intention to hire a professional to supervise and make recommendations about how excavation is undertaken so that the, um, the concerns that you've raised about uh, disruption of your foundation and drainage, uh, in fact, won't occur. I, I, those would have to be private arrangements, I think. Under the circumstances, the applicant has done virtually everything he can do within the confines of his site to address your concerns. And by removing the uh, the previous third floor, I think um, he over he he responded to your concern about light and so forth. So I'm prepared to um, uh, to support the motion as well. I I do think that the issue that you have, which is a valid one, is something you would be able to negotiate with the with the applicant and, and a consultant that would be brought in to deal with that specific issue. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, we're in committee, sorry. Um, I have a motion to approve the application, moved by Mr. Solomon, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Okay, the application's been approved. Now, I'm not sure if you filled in a dis what's called a decision request card. Um, maybe the staff can mm -hmm. show you where to find I don't know, is there any at the end there? I, I think there are some. Yeah. Some if you fill that in, then you'll be notified of the decision. Uh, by, by, if you have email, make sure you put the right, email he's address got one on. There. Oh, he's, uh, the applicant's going give to you, give you one right there. Okay? And if you have other questions, you need to speak to staff. Okay? Thanks. Thank you. Okay, item number 45, 44 is held, 97 Yardley, so we'll go to 81 Oriole Road. Um, we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevation, staff report from development engineering, as well as tree protection and plan review, and we have an information report from Bell Canada. Can I have your name, please? Good afternoon. Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation? Can we go straight to questions? I, I would prefer, or I would uh, suggest that we need some kind of lot analysis. We need your understanding of what the um, lots are like in the area to determine if these lots that you're proposing are in, in keeping with the general intent and character of the neighborhood. You sure. normally need what's called a lot analysis, which is how these lots compare to the lots in the area. We don't have that. Can you provide that sort of information for us? Um, I don't have that analysis, but um, the um, uh, planning department actually um, reviewed the case. They had um, comments about uh, some of the variances that we modified. Uh, since originally we applied for this, um, that's once the, that's once the consent's been given. My question has to do whether whether the lots that you're proposing are sure. I can I can give you a presentation the for the area. Sure. 
I think also what my colleague is saying, Mr. Shapiri, since you appear before us regularly in future, if you do have a severance, it would be nice if you gave us examples on the street and very close proximity of lots that are sure. the same size or close to the same size. Indeed, I can do that, right? With uh, your permission, I'm going to provide you with some supplementary information. Thanks. I'm going to refer to this uh, site plan, the, uh, the location map provided by the planning department. The uh, subject lot is uh, the one that you see outlined here. And right to our north side, there are number 83 and 85, um, Oriole Road. They are identical to the size that we're proposing here. So that is a lot that is uh, 50 foot frontage divided to two. Um, Immediately north of that, these are all townhomes, uh, so the, uh, the lot size for those are uh, smaller than this. Immediately to our south side is an apartment building, multi-unit, um, so the uh, lot frontage does not apply to that because there are like, I think, 12 units or something. Uh, immediately in front of how, uh, our, uh, us, uh, there are two uh, um, tower buildings, residential, uh, I believe there are, there are 18. <coughs> floors or so, and uh, to this side, these are, these are again, townhomes. Uh, so we have um, provided you with some uh, examples of uh, other applications in the same uh, road, Oriole, as, as you, th those are as you uh, basically go south on Oriole Road, so there are precedents of uh, the bigger lots being severed, and um, there are uh, also examples of the uh, uh, floor spaces for those um, if, if you're interested uh, to see. So I just wanted to, to tell you that we've done our homework, but since we were in touch with the planning and they, they seem to be okay with the severance. Um, it, it, All uh, of the townhouses are, are narrower than what you're asking for or about the same yes. size? Narrower. Yes, they are narrower. There okay. are, uh, I can. Uh, there, there. Across the road across and around the, the corner. Mm -hmm. So, in effect, oh, your right proposed away. lot frontages are consistent with that area. Right. Yes. Basically, uh, the other ones are actually narrower, but uh, um, initially we, we, were, we, we had planned to, to basically have two detached homes, but the planning uh, said we are not gonna, they were not going to support that. Okay. They were supporting something similar to the other concept, so this is a semi-detached, same as the one to our north side, same as uh, the townhouses that are attached. So they weren't uh, willing to support any like a standalone house in that context, so um, uh, we had to just put forward something that is completely cohesive with what's happening in, the, in that particular That's area. very helpful, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, panel members? Okay. So we'll take it into committee. Well, I can break the silence for the first time today. No, go ahead. <laughs> so be, I visited this site, and I'm very familiar with the area, and I would agree with um, the comments made by Mr. Shakiri. The, the house next door is almost identical. You've got the, uh, the apartments and condos that are on Avenue Road that are, in fact, towering over this entire neighborhood. So I think what's being proposed makes perfect sense in, in this area. I would uh, concur with those comments. And just to add that th the additional information that you gave us mm -hmm. is very helpful because it does show us the what is happening along the street in terms of lot sizes and prices. Glad to hear that, sir. Okay, so um, is anyone ready for a motion? Um, I'm prepared to bring forward a motion of approval on the consent application, subject to the uh, normal development engineering consent conditions. Um, 
I will thank the applicant for that information. That's the type of information that we really need to make a, a, a knowledgeable consent uh, decision. I also don't have any difficulties with the variances that are before us. I think they're reasonable given that light, that, that uh, site configuration, so I would move approval of the variances as well. I unfortunately don't have the forestry conditions for the I don't have, uh, there's don't have no forestry. They're there's just no advisory. Yeah. Okay, so then it's with the engineering and consent condition. Okay, then subject to that, I'm prepared to move those motions. Okay, do I have a seconder? Okay, motion to approve, including engineering and standard consent conditions, moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Mr. Salomon. All in favor? The application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number 47, 282 Windermere. We have before us a copy of the minutes from the September 26th public hearing. We have a copy of the survey, revised site plan, floor plans and elevations, covering letter from Stephen He, the agent, and one form letter in support by 280 Windermere. We can have your name, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of committee. My name is TJ Secura. I am a planner and principal of Design Plan Services. Uh, just to note, the letter you received from Stephen Chi, that's a uh, planner in my office. So that letter is from my office. Okay. Um, so um, I'm not sure we need a presentation. I'll just ask my colleagues here. Do no. you want to no? I don't okay. Do you have any questions? No. I just can you just generally um, outline what has changed? It, it's very straightforward. No. Or off. Yeah, the owner at uh, number 180 was here at the last meeting. That's why we asked for the deferral to have consultation with him. We did. Uh, bottom line: the second floor has been pulled back. And that has satisfied the neighbor. He signed in support. It's That's just what been it pulled back. It's not. It's still a rear two-story addition. That's what I thought from the Correct. Moment, but I thought I read somewhere that now is one story. But that's okay. Okay. Any other questions? No. No. Okay. Anybody? We'll take it into committee. Okay. Go ahead. Given though th those changes and that the uh, adjacent neighbor is no longer opposing. Um, I believe that this is uh, minor, and I would move approval of the requested variances with no conditions. Seconded. Okay, motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Salomon, seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? The application has been approved. Madam Chair, members of the committee, thank you. Okay, um, let's go to 44, 97 Yardley. Um, 97 Yardley, is the opposition still here? Yes, hey, can you grab seats along the front row, please? Panel members, we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, staff reports from development engineering, as well as tree protection and plan review. We have 13 form letters in support. Signed by residents on Yardley, Galbraith, and Tiago. And we have opposition from 101 Yardley. Okay, whenever you're ready, Mr. Massandrea. I actually have a... Thank you. Thanks. Yes, good afternoon. Um, my name is Leo Mastandrea. I am the agent for the owners at um, 97 Yardley. And uh, we are here today to sever the lot into two and construct two new detached dwellings. We met with planning to address some of their concerns and they are now satisfied and in support of our application. It was more architectural front facade the development engineering department have no concerns and we do agree to their conditions forestry has no concerns and we do also agree with their conditions we did submit 
13 letters of support from the surrounding neighbors. You should have them there. Um, I'd like to first speak to the consent. And if you turn to the first page on my handout, So the um, pink is our property at 97 Yardley. The yellow are all lots exactly what we're asking for, frontage of 25 and the same lot area as what we're uh, asking. Um, there are 14 of them. I believe eight are on Yardley and the other six are on Galbraith, the street behind. And um, based on um, the frontage in the um, lot area, planning has agreed that th because of this fact, the severance will be consistent with what is prevailing in that area. As far as the variants are concerned, um, the variances are also consistent with what's been approved here at the committee and existing in the area. If you turn pages 11 through 21, they'll show you all the highlighted variances which are similar to what we're seeking. Um, this neighborhood is in transition. Our development does respect and reinforce the physical character of the neighborhood. We do comply with the building height, the rear yard setback, the front yard setback, the neighboring side yard setback, the building length, the building depth, and both front and rear landscaping. The variance is... Um, in my opinion, are minor. Our proposal is appropriate for the development and use of the land. And the purpose of the zoning bylaw and the official plan are maintained. <coughs> In conclusion, it is my submission that we do meet the four tests. If you have any questions. I was a bit confused by your, your comment about you meeting, you indicated all of the various things that you met, side yard, backyard. You are not asking for variances on any of those? No. You meet all those components of the existing bylaw? Yes. Okay. The question I have is, uh, looking at the lot uh, study that you've given us, so in that specific block, what are the lot sizes of the remaining houses on that block? Are they, if, are they pretty much 50 footers as well? And no, so. Are we um, going to end up with having a new, you know, like if no. your is approved, you've now starting to like incremental no, so, uh, um, change to the entire block? The original uh, plan of survey are all 50 foot lots. Some of them have been split into 25s, some of them have been split two into three, so they're around 33 and a half. So there's a mixture of 25, 33, and 50s. As well in that package, there's also consent approved by the committee with the exact same frontage and lot area. So are there any consents on this actual street that have been approved? It doesn't look like it to me and from my view no. the neighborhood, like some of the infills you're talking about appear to be just single houses on larger-ish lots that are already existing at that size. So the, you're sort of, to me, starting, a, I would say, a new trend in terms of dividing the lots. I didn't get the sense that there were any lots that had been subdivided when I drove down the block. As far as I know, based on our study, but it only went back 10 years, so in the last 10 years, no. So those were existing lot sizes? New, They're new existing. New infills, but Correct. But they are consistent with what we are asking. And you can see there's two on the corner, on both sides of us. Which, which one? The ones that you're pointing out that have similar lot sizes that you're... All, all the yellow. 
Okay, but I can't read the number. 103, 103 105? 105. Yeah, the corner, 103, 105. Right now, so. Across the street. The other two on the other block. 103. 105, 113, and 116. Oh, I see. So these are lots that have bungalows currently on them? No, some are bungalows. I have photos of all of them, actually. Okay. Or some of them on the, um, if you look at my handout on the photo section, you can see the addresses at the bottom. Some of them are bungalows. Some of them are two stories. I just took the photos of the two stories. So there's a, it's a mixture, and it is an area in transition, like I said. You don't, you don't have a picture of 103 and 105, right? I do, actually. I do have a picture of 103 and 105. Like, can you put on the overhead if you have it? Sure. Nice. Cool. look like the original lot size. It's like, they look bigger than, uh, than the here. 105. Okay. That's 105. That's 105. That's across the street. This is 87. They're all on Yardley. What's the frontages for those? Do you know? These frontages are 25. 25. Yes. Uh, exactly the same as what we're proposing. 7.62. Okay. <coughs> okay. Any more questions before we go to the opposition? You'll have an opportunity to ask more questions. Okay, we'll have you stand down. We'll have you back after we hear from the opposition. How many people are speaking? Three. Okay. So, um, give that to staff, please. And then, before you start, we need your name and address. Uh, Stan Burroughs, uh, 95 Yardley Avenue, property direct, directly adjacent to the property on the west side. Okay. Okay. Um, it's, it was interesting to, to listen to some of the comments about the properties that he's talking about that are 20, currently 25 feet wide. Um, this is a fairly old neighborhood. My house is, was built in 1949. Many of the, the two-bedroom bungalows that are on the street um, were sort of the post-war houses, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, the, so the property sizes are... I believe, like the 25-foot lots, have been there since probably before the zoning bylaw was was written. Um, so, um, looking at what what um, the applicant wants to do, um, and, and and many of these um, uh, variances are basically as a result of the fact that he wants to split the lot into two. I think that's 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 the main the main thing and. Um, I look at this as, you know, that's a 36.5% a reduction from the, 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 size, the standard size of a, of a lot, which is, which is 38, 38 feet. Um, 30, 36.5% is, is a, to, in, in my view, it doesn't really seem minor, uh, even though there are several houses in the, in the area that are older houses that with 25 foot lots. Um, this is, it, I, I think one of the things you were mentioning um, uh, about, this is probably one of the first ones on Yardley to, uh, to be severed. That's, that's one of the concerns that, um, that we have is that um, what, we're, what we're looking at doing here is really increasing the density of, of the area. There are a number of 25 foot lots. This is, we could end up splitting all of them at some point as as the neighborhood uh, changes the um, that that I think constitutes more of a, a change in density which I think is maybe um, sort of out of the scope of of committee of adjustment in the sense that um, 
like if you're going to change the the zoning bylaw and the, the and you'd have to change you may change the official plan to um, to say that we're going to increase the density of these residential neighborhoods um, that I think that maybe that should be done by council um, but in, in any event um, this is this it's going to add to the uh, the traffic in the area as well because uh, Yardley Avenue is a, a fairly busy street um, it, we're as you come down Bermondsey uh, across O'Connor it turns into Yardley that is a, a major <laughs> thoroughfare for a lot of people uh, there's um, traffic calming measures were were brought into the area to uh, try and slow people down but it 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 doesn't do a very good job of that. Um, I worry once we start to run out of forty foot lot or fifty foot lots on on this street, to then we move to this to the smaller lots and try to split those as well. Um, the there's there's an, another issue that we have in the area is is flooding. Um, the down at the west end of the uh, of the street, um, it's we're lucky we're up on a on a higher part, but the the houses down uh, at the uh, west end of the street and along Westview, which runs sort of north and south or alongside of um, O'Connor, that they they flood regularly. And I mean the city is in the in, in the um, uh, uh, process of of trying to. Uh, change or up, upgrade the systems, but these systems are are, are old in 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 this area. Um, I think that's probably good for me. I'll let my other neighbors. Oh, I do have uh, some of these were also the comments of of my neighbor from number eighty eight, uh, Dev Singh. He was here most of the afternoon, but yeah. uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I know, we're running. <laughs> Did you want to submit but, the comments, or are you um, already incorporated them into I, I've incorporated them into mine, but if we could just register his uh, name as, a, as an opponent, as, okay. as in opposition as well. So number 88. Number 88. What's his name, sorry? Dev, Dev D-E-V, yep. Singh, okay. S-I-N-G-H. All right, just okay. a quick Thank question. You. Just um, on sure. your, your lot, what's your lot frontage? Uh, we're 50 by 100 foot lot. And would you would you say that that was the dominant? Sorry. The alternate to what was presented by the applicant. Would you say your lot is the dominant lot in the area? Was that the dominant character? Um, it's it is sort of a mixture. Like the the um, the sort of the west half of the street. I think is there's a lot of. The two-bedroom bungalows, which I think are sort of the, that standard lot size. Yeah. Um, once you get to the other half, it's um, there's there's a fair number of 50-foot lots, um, and there's a couple of other sizes. Like there's, as he sh showed on his um, map, there's and, and there's a few 25s. Not all the bungalows are 20. Or not all, not all the bungalows are on 25-foot lots as well, right? No. East York bungalows are historically on properties that are wider than 25 feet. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 most of the bungalows down at the, the west end of the street are probably on the, the um, what is it, the, was it the 12 meters? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Heather Liberty. I'm at 90 Yardley Avenue. I'm in one of the tiny two-bedroom houses on the 25-foot lot. I'm across the street. Um, a lot of the houses on the street are post-war bungalows. So you're looking at fairly small houses on good-sized lots. And one of the issues that we have been dealing with on this street is the sewer system is totally inadequate. We have, starting from where we are at the top of the hill, going down the hill to Westview, basements flood every time we get a heavy rain. And they flood all the way along Westview as well. And now we have a condo building at the end of the street, which is just going to exacerbate the whole problem. 
Um, these are original sewer systems. They've never been updated. The city has a plan to fix the flooding problems, but when they're going to get to our street, we don't know. We have not been told. I have been going to the meetings, but at this point, we just don't know. My issue with the severance is with a compromised sewer system already, we're going to be adding a lot of people to the area, a lot of new houses. Because if we have this one lot severed, they're going to go for other lots. And there's quite a few 50-foot lots on the street. So the population density is going to do nothing but increase on infrastructure that can't handle the load right now. We also have a real issue with the traffic. It's just, it's getting insane going up and down the street because we are the only street with stoplights at either end. You either have to go basically down to St. Clair or up to Sunrise to get across. And I'm just afraid that if we start severing lots, it's not going to end. Population density is far going to outstrip what the infrastructure can handle. Additionally, as we put bigger and bigger houses on these lots, the green space is what absorbs a lot of the rain. We're losing all our green space on the street, which again is going to make the flooding problems even worse. Of this. No, we don't. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Afternoon. I'm George Eastman. I'm at 91 Yardley, uh, two doors over, if you will. Uh, just to emphasize my uh, neighbor's concerns, the, um, in my mind, and I haven't paced all the way up and down the neighborhood, they're mostly 50 foot lots, maybe 35. And for our street, this would be the first um, house that they're looking to subdivide a 50 into 25. In order to do that and be successful, they've triggered seven variances to the bylaws. Now, we have a number of infill houses that have not triggered any variances. They're all in the 50-foot lots. Uh, I think there was one across the street from me, and he wanted a little bit more porch. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, this is very, very inconsistent to the neighborhood complexity. As we mentioned, there's a lot of bungalows. I believe there are two bedroom bungalows. Hmm? Yes, there's two bungalows, uh, two bedroom bungalows. The proposal here is four, two, four bedroom. All right, now I brought up a kid on my lot, backyard, trying to keep her in there. She climbed fences really well, but it doubled the size and barely enough to contain one kid. Here we have potential six kids in a postage stamp backyard, you know, which raises, in my mind, a safety concern. If the kids can't play in the backyard, they're going to go to the street. And keep in mind, we have speed bumps with traffic lights on either end. With the crosstown construction in uh, Allen Eglinton, we're a great thoroughfare. As you said, uh, sunrise, you can't make a left hand, you, you can't go straight through. Our streets, you can go straight through and get all the way out to Warden. All right, there's a little bit of a dipsy duel, but it's an alternative path. And with my experience in Highway 7 uh, in Markham, even though the construction's finished, it's still a mess. Okay, traffic's just horrendous, will be being used as a shortcut. Okay, a couple of other concerns I have is with the, the way that's laid out. Um, 
My apologies to the architect. Okay, I played around a little bit. This is what we're looking at, too. What I'm going to call almost town, townhouse-esque houses. And you saw some of the pictures here with the setbacks. You know, the variation in the frontage. Okay, yard in the front. Whereas here, we're looking at two driveways and two doors. Separated by four feet. Okay? So we have this much in between. To the extent that they had to say, oh, they're so close, we have to put a fireproof door in, a fireproof window in there? Okay, fire resistant. Got the wrong terminology. 45 minute fire resistant window and door between the two houses. Which I believe is unheard in our neighborhood. Okay, there's a similar house north of us. Uh, that is, a, in my mind, an eyesore, where they put, I believe you threw up a picture. But, um, you know, all the way through, as variations, except when you get down to the west end of the street, I think the architect who did the uh, subdivision had a lot of carbon paper. Okay, two-bedroom bungalow. All right, so um, I'd like to uh, urge that this severance is denied. Okay. Uh, panel members, do you have any questions of the speaker? No. No? Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Masandrea, uh, speak to the issues raised, please. Um. So one of the issues was regarding the landscaping. Um, we comply with the landscaping bylaw in the rear yard and in the front yard. Um, if I look to that's one one five yardly. Um, it's a essentially almost a three story dwelling, and. Um, and this is another one at 129 Yardley. And the variances for this property are consistent and above what we are asking. As resp With respects to the lots, maintaining the characteristics of the neighborhood, 14 lots on the immediate area that are exactly the same size as what we're seeking. The storm water would be the same if we were to build one home or two homes as far as the storm water. The sewer, the sewer system, I don't think there's an issue with the sewer system. Um, when we look at the houses that were built on the street, the next street, Galbraith, these are the houses that are directly across on Galbraith, one block over. That's the two in from the corner. Those are the two on the corner. And I believe these are the ones that are crossed. So in my opinion, I do feel that it does meet and match the characteristics of the neighborhood. In fact, we removed our garage to satisfy planning to not have a room above our garage. So it looks more this characteristics of the neighborhood. The Excuse me, could, could you clarify your last comment? You said you removed your garage? Yes. Initially, we had a similar design to this. With the garage living room above 
That's what I've got. You changed it? Yeah, because the... We got the revised drawing? You have the revised. We didn't submit until we <coughs> dealt with planning. So planning said that this is out of character for the neighborhood. So we agreed. So we removed the... Ours we, garage. Sorry, we didn't remove the garage. We removed the room above. You said the garage. You said you removed sorry, the garage. Sorry, I'm mistaken. So the garage we, is still here. It's still... So the garage is there. Just still that, an integral garage. It's still integral garage, but there's no room above. So, it's, so we don't have that... Well, those windows above it are gone? Is that what you're saying? Like, no. I'm, I'm no. completely confused. So what we have is correct. So with the wind, so you have the door, right? And then- the What you have is correct, You yes. step up and then there's two windows above the garage and then In you the go bedroom. to the next floor. Correct. Okay, so. As opposed to having the garage, then a living room, then- Ours is like this. Ours is similar to this. Correct. Which planning was, that's why planning agreed to our proposal is because we remove the living room above the garage. Did it decrease the height or no? It did. It decreased the height. It decreased the, the there was two heights. One was for the soffit and one was for the main wall. Ultimately, what happens when you have the living room above the garage? I'm projecting. You, add, you end up with another half story. Right, which, which, we agreed, which we agreed with, and that's why then they were in support of our application, because now this is more in keeping with the neighborhood. Okay, um, the example for number 129, Yardley, that lot complies with lot area? Like, uh, it's, like it's the same size like lot. I know because you're showing 43.1% coverage variance request, but there's no variance for frontage. So it's it was an existing lot. It's an existing lot. It was an existing lot, but the the lot sizes all the yellow. Right. So it's what you say here: 7.62 and 232.26. All those ones I highlighted in the yellow are identical to what we're, we're, we're asking. Frontage and lot area. But that was a pre-existing lot. It was a pre-existing lot. Yes, it was a pre-existing lot, but it's the same size. Okay. <clears throat> and the, I know most of your examples are actually on Galbraith. So these other ones that are in yellow... Okay, I get that they're the same lot area frontage to what you're proposing, but what kind of lot coverage is on those? They're just the standard bungalows or... I mean, I, I drove the street, and to be honest, the lots didn't really look like there were any small ones, or at least not a lot of them. Most of them look like they're kind of all the same. Well, I have a plan of subdivision, so all the lots were 50-foot lots. Some of them, which you can see, were split at some point to 25s. Others, they took two lots and made three. So they were about 33, 34. So some lots are 50, some lots are around 33, 34, and some lots are 25. Are you suggesting that the 25 ones were created by consent recently? No. no on Yardley, no, but on Galbraith, yes. On Yardley, they were done at some point because I do have a plan of subdivision that does show that they were all 50s when they were first okay. administrated. So sorry, just back to what I was saying. So forget about Galbraith for a second. I just want to talk about Yardley. So the, the different sized lots, in terms of coverage on those lots, Yes. how does that compare with what you're asking for? Look for... I, I, I get that... That there's examples that you've given us, but in terms of the page 11, yeah. page 11 has, I believe, 129 Yardley. One. Yeah. At 43.1, that's one. But what about the rest of the yellow ones? Like, what's on there in terms of coverage? Um, I just pulled the recent ones. I, I have another file. I just pulled out some of the recent ones, but I do have another file. Some of them are, for example, 56 Yardley. Right. 
That's 38.03%. Okay, it's not on this map of yours. I don't have it on the map. It's way off here. Yeah, it's way down here. But so these other yellow ones, do you have any any coverages for those or not? Because the only one we have it for is this one. The rest are all Galbraith on your examples. No, I don't have them because they didn't have the decisions. Those were the I, so they're mostly like original bungalows? Yeah. Right. Okay, so the presumably the coverage is in the compliance then. Yeah. Okay. Keep in mind, our research, when we do it, it only goes back 10 years. So I'm sure we would have found more if it went back further, but it doesn't. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant? No. Okay. We'll take it into committee then for discussion and a decision. Based on the information that we have, I have concerns with the proposed severances or that the proposed 25-foot uh, lots are not in keeping with the character, predominant character of that particular block and would set a precedent for severance of other 50-foot lots that are located along that block. I share that concern in addition to which the, uh, the the people in opposition have raised, I think, real concerns about is there f sufficient services to um, uh, to deal with that increase in density, and it sounds as though there's already servicing problems, I, but I share your concern. Also, my impression of the street is not what this drawing were, but this plan would tend to suggest my impression was, as, as the chairman said, a sort of a uniformity of character, um, and I find the proposal out of keeping with that uniformity. I agree with it. Great. We'll need a motion. Based on those comments, I would uh, put forward a motion um, for refusal of the requested severances and requested variances. Okay, I have a motion moved by Mr. Solomon to refuse the application, seconded by Mr. Nipple. All in favor? The application is refused. Thank you. Okay, for the residents, if you haven't filled in the decision request card, please do so and give it to staff. Um, okay, um, item number 46, 273 to 275 on. And... Opposition still here? Okay. All right, I got a list of stuff here. So we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, covering letter from Ty Ryuk, the agent, um, actually a couple of them, one from September, one from December, and uh, it includes proposed revisions to the plans in the most recent correspondence, which I might add we received yeah. very late last night. Um, we have email correspondence from an external liaison, the right-of-way control from Bell Canada, which is for information only, staff report from development engineering, as well as tree protection and plan review, correspondence in support from 191 Pinewood Avenue, as well as 271 Vaughan Road, Correspondence in opposition from 193 Pinewood. Can I have your name, please? Uh, Joe Mehevic. <clears throat> I'm acting as an agent for the applicant, and I'll be quick and allow the planner to do the bulk of the presentation. Uh, basically, the only thing I really wanted to do was give you some history on this. This has been an active file for uh, more than a year, at least in the background. Um, when uh, I was a city councilor for this area, the proposal has gone through a number of iterations, uh, working with uh, city staff, and it is uh, at this point uh, now. 
Um, I would have supported it um, as a uh, city councilor, and that's why, frankly, I'm standing uh, here before you uh, now. Um, I think the applicant has worked very hard with the neighbors, and the reason why you see the very minor inches only small variances was as the, as the res as a result of a meeting a small community meeting that was held with uh, neighbors in uh, the uh, various directions to deal with any issues uh, that meeting happened uh, on uh, November 25th and since then the applicant has tried to resolve those issues uh, especially the neighbor to the north on Pinewood wanted a foot um, instead of 1.5 as the bylaw, and the proposal was 0.9 to basically go to 1.2, so they are agreeable. The resident uh, on the Vaughn Road side is also agreeable. I think the general consensus, yes, there is an exception that I, th I think you're going to hear from. Uh, the community surrounding there is, uh, is supportive of, uh, of this, uh, as is the city planner as well, has, uh, has reviewed it a number of times and uh, it, uh, finds it uh, acceptable and has, as you can see, no letter of opposition as well. So I think all the check boxes have been hit with this application and certainly uh, I would uh, support it both um, as the agent but also as someone who lives around the corner on Humewood. Okay, Mr. Mahavik, um, I think it's great that, that there was a lot of work done on this. I, I would like you to know the committee does have concerns because there are a number of revisions and I, I, I understand they're small. I did go through them last night and correct me if I'm wrong, but under 46F, based on the chart that you submitted, I guess you yes, submitted sir. it, yes. um, there's a variance missing. Because on that chart, you're asking for a lot frontage variance of 11.58. And the, there isn't anything here that I see for lot frontage, which... Uh, so that's related to the single detached dwelling, which is 275 uh, Vaughan Road. Uh, the, there isn't a lot frontage that's required. Uh, it's, it's been modified. That's why it's still there. Uh, but a lot frontage, uh, lot frontage variance is not required. It, all, in addition to that, as a result of, I guess... So can you maybe, uh, because I... Can you maybe go through all the revisions? Because sure, a lot and of I revisions, think just for think... ease of reference, I'll give you a handout with where we marked up the notices with the well, revisions. Oh, these notices, it would be the public notices as revised as per the revised plans that have been I... submitted. But just to go through it in detail, basically, basically the result of these changes was from relocation of 273A, which is the most northerly semi-detached dwelling, pushing it by approximately 0.3 of a meter southerly. And this was to achieve a, uh, to accommodate the neighbor at 191 Pinewood Avenue, to provide them with the additional separation distance uh, that they desired, which we had no problems with. As a result of that, what happened was, is the building shifted. So first block of the semis, the second block of the semis, and the single detached, all shift to southerly, in addition to slight modifications of the lot lines as well. So there are modifications to one, side yard setbacks, lot areas, and also uh, to FSI. But in a, just in addition to this, as a result of conversation with the zoning department yesterday, and I do have an email from Steve Prince confirming this, the lot frontage variance is related to the semi-detached dwellings for 273A, 273B, 274A, and 274B. The actual lot frontage requirement is six meters, so those variances related to lot frontages are no longer required. In addition to that, the, variant, the notice indicates so I, I really think I, I respect and, your up like and, your and let me just what I really would like you to start with sure. is to go through the notices we have, sure. tell us the revisions and tell us what's being removed, if anything. So that we know exactly what we have before us now. Because I like I said, I was going by your chart, so I may have made mistakes, but so this is <laughs> I see. Okay. So this is a comprehensive set yes. of everything you're asking for. Because, as you know, normally the committee doesn't really entertain. I, and I, I totally understand. We're totally in your hands in this regard, where we would obviously like to proceed forward today. Um, but I, when you re re read the notices, so we'll start with the consent. Um, okay, so let's, yeah. So can, let's, can I ask one further? Sure. Do the people that are appealing or opposed, 
Do they know about these changes? Have they been given these changes? This, these changes were a result of uh, our conversation with 191 so uh, these people Pinewood. Don't know about them. So no, they don't. They wouldn't know. But at the time, sorry, if I could. No, just, but so did you not have discussions with them? Also? We've had a public consultation open house on November twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. Uh, they were in attendance up until two, December 9th, We were under the impression that everybody was satisfied, and then we, we saw the letter from uh, dated December tenth. That was in opposition. So that was yesterday, and we're here today. So as a result of that, no, we didn't anticipate any opposition, but there is. So there was no disingenuous efforts to hide anything no, from the No, I wasn't suggesting yeah. that, but I don't think it's fair for us to expect the opposition to be able to respond to something that is has so many complex changes. I'm, I'm the same as the chairman. I, this is a lot of changes. I appreciate why they're there. I appreciate you're trying to accommodate um, an opposition. But we've also got people here that are at a disadvantage, I would, I would and, suggest. And I would, I would submit to the committee is that... Um, like you said, it was an effort to work with neighbors. We did have our own public open house. The changes, if you go through them, and what, that's your decision to go through them, are pretty minor. There are deletions of certain variances specifically related to lot frontage. However, at the end of the day, um, we are in committee's hands whether or not if these changes are considered minor and appropriate for to proceed today. Um, and we're hoping that uh, you would agree that they're minor enough to uh, proceed and uh, have this matter heard. So, sorry, just back to, have you had a, had a chance today to speak? Today, yes, we did. Do you know what their concerns are? Yes, we did. Any of these changes here address the concerns? Of these well, there was one concern about lot frontage, so regarding the semis, those variances are no longer required. Um, there was concerns about traffic, generation um, and transportation department did not comment on this application. In addition to that, there's currently existing on the property uh, two semis in addition to a church. Um, so the traffic generation I would submit to committee would be less than what's existing there today. Um, in addition to FSI and also heights, it's within the range of what's been approved if the committee wishes to hear this uh, submissions. Okay, and I'm sorry, I'm flipping through this because it's sure. a lot. Can you just tell me which ones are deleted? Because I can't. Sure. If you go to uh, part one, uh, 273 part one, variance number four is deleted. In addition, so for part one. Hang on, part one. So we're talking about minor variances, part yeah. one. Sorry, I'm starting with part two. So it says the minimum law frontage requires 12 meters. It's actually six, and we're proposing 7.63, so the variance is no longer required. Can you just explain that so we understand? Sure. What the uh, zoning department, they made it an error. What they did was the zoning map indicates an F value, which is the frontage value, and the frontage value for this uh, site is 12. And what they did was they applied that 12 meters to each individual semi-detached unit, whereas suppose it was supposed to be applied to the entire semi-detached block and divided by two, resulting in six meters. Um, so as a result of that and that confirmation, I do have an email from Steve Prince confirming that, and I could just put it up there. And it's up there, and basically what it says is that it's six meters. Uh, it would be six meters lot frontage for each individual semi-unit. Uh, in addition to that, the lot area requirement, uh, you'll note on variance number, uh, looking at part one, looking at the, so basically the lot area requirements at number three, it says 360 meter required. It's actually 180 square meters that's required. So, sorry. Madam Chairman, I think we're doing a disservice to everybody by hearing this application today. Um, I appreciate why we are where we are. I don't believe the applicant is in any way trying to mislead us. Um, but I think trying to digest what's before us and, and to provide for knowledgeable comments on that and a, and a good decision uh, at quarter after six on an agenda day where we've covered half the world is a bit unreasonable. I 
think, and I'm not a fan of deferrals at all. Nor are we. I believe that this application should be deferred so that it can get the kind of attention that it deserves uh, and that the uh, people that are opposed have an opportunity to at least understand what is currently before us. My fear is that an hour and a half from now, we're going to have gone through all these numbers and we're going to be so totally confused that we're not going to make a good decision. I also note this is not typical, but um, if there could be a, a date that could be assigned for this matter to return as opposed to being signy die, uh, just because we, of the efforts that have been made. We don't signy die. We do three to six months. Um, I, I, hmm. I'm just I, asking. I don't know. It's, it would, first of all, depend how quickly yes, I understand. you come back. Now, assuming you're going to talk to these neighbors as well and take that opportunity to perhaps resolve whatever their issues are since it's going to be deferred. And um, I, I don't know how soon we can have it back, three months at the earliest, or do you think if, if it's brought back clearly with everything, um, is there a chance you can slot it in February? I don't know. Just, I think ultimately it will save I us time if we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably looking at March at Understood. the earliest. I'm just asking the question. Could you just turn your mic on? There's a little button. Just push it on. In no, front. in, in yeah. the yeah, that's it. There's a red button. Is the red light on? on. In the mic. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So I was just saying, I'm not sure if it matters at this point, but we we were aware that there was a slight change from from our neighbor. Um, and from our understanding at this point, it is so small a change, and the and in our our opposition is so large, like the entire fundamental proposal is off, as it in terms of the character of, of our small strip of our street. So I'm not sure if that changes your mind or not. I mean. I, I, yeah, and just also to, to be aware, they're presenting an image that, that, that everyone's on board and there's all this support. We're actually representing four of the eight houses on our street that are all opposed to this project. So, so in terms of us being the only opposition, we're representing them as well. And if anything, I'm, I'm saying if there is going to be changes to that, uh, you know, it's a funny situation where a lot of neighbors are happy to see the church, uh, whatever. They, they're okay with the church leaving and seeing new development, but not this development. So I don't know if that matters. But anyways, I figure I put that out there because obviously we know we're happy to speed this process along as well. So, but... That's up to you. I'm happy to come back. I think the committee has just some concerns just with the number of, of changes here and recognizing the fact that they are small numerically, but um, we just to, to digest. We got the information very late. Because right, really the crux of our argument is we're on a street with 50 foot, 40 to 50 foot lots, and there's only eight of them. Right. And to, 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 to jam five family homes, four semis and one detached, it, it just doesn't match that part. But it's being passed off as a Vaughn Road characteristic because it would match uh, the busier, smaller homes of Vaughn Road, but not the Pinewood. And I think that's the problem here. I don't know if, so if there sense. was if there was a request for deferral, the applicant would have to decide whether or not he supported a request for deferral, and you would be asked as well. What I'm hearing you say is deferral wouldn't be of any purpose to you unless the applicant was going to do major revisions to the proposal. My understanding is that's not his intent, and I don't right. I don't mean to paint him in a negative way because of that. What the intent is is to clarify what we actually have in front of us because. It would be so easy to make a mistake in this right now because there are so many changes. Um, so if there were a deferral, um, I gather you you said you'd be happy to come back. Oh, happy, happy. I but should, you're, say, but I you're say happy, but, uh, but you're, you're opposed to the general intent of this application. So you, that's not going to change. And, and the kind of 
revisions you'd be looking for are not the sorts of things that yeah, I, we have never felt an openness of dialogue. I'm of not saying that. I'm just changes. I don't believe that. I don't believe that they're looking to reduce the number of lots and no. take stories off and, and all that kind of Correct. stuff, which is maybe what would address your concerns. So, um, so I was just suggesting maybe there's some benefit to addressing that issue because that really is the main issue. It's the bigger one that won't go away. But well, I think panel members, first of all, is to decide whether or not you will like to see this deferred because of all the um, adjustments. That are proposed. I'm in my colleague's hands. I thought there was merit in a deferral because I, I think. I'm curious about a question. Um, you were sort of going through frontages, saying now because it's a set of semis, there's no longer frontage issues and variances. Does that right. have a ripple effect in all the other floor space index? There are, there's slight modifications to FSI, um, to lot areas, and also to uh, setbacks. Um, and that is all a result of the building shifting southerly. But apart from the building shift, yes. because the frontage is removed, the, the required lot frontage, mm -hmm. there's no other issues. Like that doesn't have another Im further impact on the changes we've made here. Is that no, no. Three, four, six. So all the variants, just to be clear, all the variances remain the same with the exception of lot frontage variants related to semis being eliminated. in size in terms of variances in terms of coverage. So the GFA has an increase. No. So the GFA remains the same as the original. It's a result of the lot areas shifting or changing that creates uh, the FSI numbers either going up or going down. Yeah. Under part two, variance number six. Yes. Are you saying that the, um, the lot area is incorrect for what the zoning bylaw permits or is that like I'm just no so if you look at number two the part two was originally 123.99 yep. it's decreased down to 122.97 right. and as a result of that the FSI goes up from 1.58 to 1.59 but you'll also note that the GFA 195.5 number, that remains the same. Right. I just was curious why they scratched out the 107.31 meters. And, and it says... So, it, so basically the 0.8 would now have to be multiplied to the 122.97. Just to put it in perspective, Madam Chair, there's 62 revisions here. Yeah, I, that's not... That's a lot of revisions. I mean, I personally would be inclined to defer this, but it's up to you guys. Well, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm going to bring forward a motion of deferral. We'll see what happens with it. Um, I understand that the change is a result of consultation, and for that, I'm very appreciative. Um, I understand that there's major opposition with the concept, and. Um, that's unlikely to be resolved with a revised application um, if, if the variance changes that we're talking about are just clarified. But notwithstanding, I think that we stand a much better chance of making a good decision with a clear application before us. I'm concerned that with 50-odd changes, um, the chances for mistakes are just too high. And therefore, um, I recommend that the application be deferred to the first possible meeting. I appreciate that this creates a delay, and I would not want to make the delay any greater than it has to be. Okay. I have a motion to defer the item, including recirculation fees, Yes. to the first available meeting date um, after you bring back everything. Do I have a seconder? Okay, so that's moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Mr. Solomon. Is there uh, or all in favor? Okay, so the item's been deferred. Thank you. <coughs> you're, you're the only ones left, but I, you told me to keep you till the end, so I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I saw you calculating and calculating over there, so I thought, nah, he's not ready yet. Okay, that's item price. number 38. Okay, just bear with. Oh, yes, this is Street? 
39, sorry. Okay, just bear with me one second here. Is that 143 G's? Yeah. All right, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, email correspondence from the manager, permits and enforcement, parking, transportation services, a staff report from tree protection and plan review, and a lot of opposition from residents on Rose Park, Heath, and Bogdan as, yeah, that's it. So. I'm Chair. I'm Peter Higgins of Peter Higgins Architect Incorporated. Uh, I'm here today with my client Adam Patel, uh, who will be, uh, who would like to build a new house on this property. It is at present. Uh, can you guys uh, <laughs> maybe go outside or? It's it's uh, almost without question the smallest house on the property, in the neighborhood that it is at present on the property. And uh, we would like to build a new home. We've had uh, two hours worth of consultation back and forth. The site plan that you see on the um, screens or on your screens show, among other things, a shortened house so that we have no length variance. We've increased the east or what is on the bottom of your drawing uh, side yard setback from 0.9 to 1.05 meters whereas 1.2 is required. We've maintained the 0.9 on the west, which is the upper section. Um, we've talked a lot about windows, privacy overlooks, etc. And the main thing is we've been able to uh, reduce the FSI, although we thought 66 was quite reasonable. I'm going to suggest you write it in at 64.5 or 0.645. The reason being we have not done the calculations yet. We know we are above 60, but we're something less than 66. Okay. So um, just to go through the, yeah. if I may, to go through the uh, variances, number one is reduced to 0.645. Number two, which is the east side yard setback. All the meters. square meters for number one. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to crunch those numbers. You have to go calculate numbers. again. <laughs> I'm afraid so, um, unless somebody can do it for me. Can you do? Yeah, shoot. No, I'll have to get right back to you. All right. Uh, number, number two, the detached dwelling will be located 1.05 meters from the east lot line. We maintain number three at 0.9 for the west lot line. No change to the parking space. Uh, we were all prepared with lots of photographs to show you that there was lots and lots of parking on uh, the front yards for houses that had driveways, had garages, and did not. So we felt that it was the way the neighborhood is going, and the property is too small, too narrow, to have either an integral garage or a driveway to the back. And so the... The neighbors graciously agreed that was not an issue. The maximum permitted length under number five is 17 meters. We had a variance of 17.6. We are now down to 16.5 as the longest dimension. It does vary because according to what you're seeing on the screen, we have notched the corners and the east side is narrower, but nevertheless, um, the, the neighbors have agreed to give me a week to present to them revised site plan and revised numbers, uh, but I'm coming to you with the neighbors saying that they're okay with the changes and perhaps they'd like to speak while I number crunch. Can I clarify? Yes, sir. I didn't get them all. Number two, it's, is it 1.05? Yes, correct. And three was 1.05, and what was five? No, three remains as 0.9. Variance no, five, five is removed. Number five is gone. I thought you said three. Variance five is gone because we've reduced it well below the 17 meters. Okay. Thanks. 
that basically was trying to take care of the neighbors' concerns that they were going to feel boxed in and that we weren't able to provide them with large notches that they have themselves and it, the floor plan will not allow that. So we've done our best to shorten the house and notch the corners. We never had a height variance, but we've also moved the roof, the angled roof back a little bit so that it's again less, allows more sun into the properties. So why don't I just take a few minutes and do my number crunching. Well, they always, they always do. Uh, and I know I understand why yeah. <laughs> that there would be no house left given the side yard setbacks um, it would be all garage and a front door or we would have to be like the house to the east which is Kelly's house which is only uh, a foot off the property line in order to shift the house all the way over to have a narrow driveway to a non-existent backyard garage so we think that we can convince transportation but in the meantime um, the parking fits very easily on the private property, fully on private property, plus some space. There had been some concern from forestry about a municipal tree, and what we've done is we maintain the curb cut. We're leaving the curb cut as it is there existing, and we'll have to come over the sidewalk and then start to angle a little bit. Um, but it will save the tree because nothing will change in the adjacency of the tree vis-a-vis -vis the driveway. And we'll have to protect that tree during construction, of course. Um, in terms of the parking then, um, are most of the parking spaces, is there, are most of them front yard parking? Or are they parking uh, on a driveway behind the front wall of the house? No, most are in front. And there are quite a few, um, I, I have a pile of arguments to make, but given well, the lateness of this. To, I wanted to bring that up as a, I don't know if you were gonna address it, but. Well, we'll have to address transportation and we'll say that if we're approved at the Committee of Adjustment for the uh, front yard parking as opposed to behind the main wall. We will then say it's fully on uh, private property. We'll have permeable behaviors, which is the norm that's being asked these days, of course. And I expect we'll have success with transportation. Okay, okay so you're going to go calculate and we'll hear from the neighbors. Good afternoon, uh, members of the committee, and uh, thank you for staying this late. Um, my name is Michael Manette from M Plan Inc., and I'm uh, retained by Lisa Nemiroff, owner of 141 Heath Street, and Kelly Blair, the owner of 145 Heath Street. Um, I, uh, I did submit a letter, which you hopefully have had an opportunity to read, and we had air photos and photos. I don't think I need to go through those. Um, because we've had, as you've heard, we've had extensive discussions and negotiations this afternoon. I think based upon the concerns we've raised and based upon the constraints on the property, we've come to a reasonable compromise. Uh, I want to commend the applicant and his architect for working with us to try and accommodate uh, the majority of the concerns. And we are happy to see the plans and the variances being changed. However, we remain uh, effectively waiting for the plans to be shown to us um, in their final form to accommodate what effectively become the notches and the, the reductions of the building footprint. And, uh, and also, of course, the reduction of the, the roof line, which of course makes sense because if you reduce the wall and move it back, you have to move the roof accordingly. So that would come uh, automatically. Uh, we were interested in seeing what the final number is on the GFA. Um, we thought we were around 0.64. I understand the need for 0.645 to provide some leeway until the numbers are crunched because <clears throat> until the architect has the opportunity to finalize the plans, we really won't know what the final numbers are. Um, however, if the committee chooses to make its decision today, then of course we will have an opportunity between the period of your approval and the appeal period to determine whether or not we uh, continue our support 
Uh, but we still would have an opportunity, of course, if we're not satisfied with the plans, to appeal the decision to TLAB. Um, because uh, in many cases, the committee chooses to tie the plans to the, the variances to the plans that are attached. In this case, we haven't got the plans yet. So I'm not sure um, how that gets dealt with, other than us having an opportunity to have a period of time for an appeal if, we don't, if we're not satisfied with the plans provided. And then, of course, in order to deal with plans, because it's no longer tied to the variances, we would have to have some kind of private agreement or undertaking that those plans would be the ones put forward for building permit. And that may be a separate agreement outside of your jurisdiction. So on the basis of that, subject to, I guess we'll hear the final numbers, um, we're satisfied that uh, we've negotiated what seems to be a reasonable settlement on the matter. Uh, the variances now, we've, we've reduced one and eliminated one completely. We've reduced a number of others. Um, we will look at your decision in its final form once we receive it, and then we'll have an opportunity to, to decide if we're going to be able to sign off on it effectively with the applicant. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Higgins, I know you're calculating. The, um, the marked up plan that you have here, does that accurately reflect the changes in the variances? We could tie it to this? Okay. And can you sign it then? We need some way to identify it. Okay. okay. There, are, there are floor plans as well that could be it because we looked at those. Okay, so maybe Mr. Higgins, you can tell us which plans. Um, reflect when, when it when you're done calculating you can tell us which plans reflect all the things you discussed and we can tie it to all those plans and I, I would suggest that the only way because there are going to be a lot of plans um, the only way that would make sense is we, we would identify them as the plans that are signed and dated and filed by you and filed with us today otherwise we're going to get them confused okay Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you need five, ten minutes? No. Two? <laughs> okay. Right there. All righty. Yeah, that's what he said. That's why if they were saying we can't really attach plans and the chairman was saying, well, what if we use these plans? And as long as he signs. So you have the square footage. We'll start with that. The square meters is two. Seven seven point nine zero. Okay. And I'll put seven, that seven, I'll put that on the drawing. Okay. Two seven seven point nine zero square meters. Seven point nine. Okay, I'll sign it at the bottom. Okay. Today is December eleventh. It is. Okay, Kelly, I don't know if you want to initial this to say that you are in agreement with this photograph. And uh, the owner of one do that. Yeah. Because you are part of the And I'll do that if I may. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We have a lot of good things going on this afternoon, but we want to make sure it continues. <laughs> oh, you're going to take a picture? Sure, go right ahead. Yep, everyone's taking a picture. <laughs> it's a beautiful one. <laughs> I like to let all this attention go to you. Today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'll file it if I may. Sure. Let's make sure the members, then they know what we're voting on. So it's drawing A10 as amended. Okay.
in the parking greens. So I think that covers the uh, concern of the opposition tying it to plans. Uh, yeah, would you, I, you know what, I'd be happy to submit the other two because they're, they're clearer. Which ones? They're first and second floor plans. Okay, we'll take them all now. Will those photos be put onto the file, at, um, the committee file? Building. Okay. So they're on the CV. Okay. No, the do I they're going to be officially yeah. December 11th. Their drawings A4 and A5, if you would like. And A5, okay. Yeah, they're the. So first it's A4, A5, and A10? Correct. All right. And they're the first floor. Oh, 1.0. Uh, yeah. This is first and second floor. This very clearly shows the dimensions we've been discussing. Okay. I don't think you need to personally. I use those plans to show, I use those plans in blue to show them the difference between what we had in front of them before and what we're proposing. There you go. You're using paper and not computers. <laughs> Hard copies are still good. No, I wouldn't. I, I It has all the, um, Mr. Niffel, it has all the oh, dimensions I on it. It has, I am just, you know, a week from now, you're going to be so upset because you missed a digit somewhere. I, that, that's why there's a lot of whiteout. I've changed it a number of times because I had missed digits. Is it the one, the one that goes with the decision? To this, you know, they're providing the, the uh, they're providing the final version to us to sign off on. So those should probably get submitted as the final. No, but if we make a condition that they built be built substantially in accordance, it has with, to be. This is going downstairs <clears throat> or wherever it goes, and they're going to have to look at this and determine. You've looked at it carefully. I, I'm, I'm just wondering if staff is going to, going to be able to, but I'm not. A, but if building, building required it, would you be able to give them a cleaned up version that matches this, but it's done on no, on the computer? Yes. Well, I, I've promised that for the neighbors, I'll have it within a week. Yeah, they'll give them the computerized so, okay, version. Okay, as long as there's no problem. I'm just okay, as long as you're all good with this. Okay. Well, no, we're going to, our decision, um, assuming that's where committee is going, would uh, have a condition that it you know, matches the drawings that we received today. And then the other, getting the technical version, where it's nice and clean, that you're going to get, that's just sort of a moot point for building, so it's better for them to see instead of the scratched up version. But it would have to match this exactly. I don't okay? want to belabor the point, but... Would you have a concern if we only reference the site plan? I share my colleagues' concern. There is so much on here. I can imagine staff in the building department just tearing their hair out. I think we can be satisfied with that because we're going to get. Okay, yeah, I'll take so them back. I. So you're satisfied with yeah. just site plan, or do you want the floor plan? No, the site plan has all the numbers that are yeah, relevant. And, to the and okay. it's a little well, less confusing for somebody who hasn't seen all of this. And if we, I mean, the subject to that we're going to get the final plans. And yes, you're going to get the final ones. Deal anyway, so. yeah. Yeah. And you have a photograph of them, so, you know. Yeah. You okay. Double check. All right. Any other questions, no. panel members? All right. We'll take it into committee then for um, comments and a motion.
Well, I'm just going to move a motion to approve the requested variances as amended subject to urban forestry conditions and that and tie it to the site plan a amended a 1.0 as signed by peter higgins architect and filed with us today great question do we need to put the transportation services port in no because then, well they, then they put in here even if we if we grant the application they want them to contact them about I, no, they're going to no have to do that anyway. All. We don't need to do no. it. Okay, fine. I would second it. Second the motion. Okay, motion moved by Mr. Solomon, seconded by Mr. Niffle. All in favor? Okay, your application is approved as amended with the attached plan. Thank you very much for your patience and, and for staying late. And the meeting's adjourned at 6:43. Thank you and happy holidays, everyone. Long day. Very long day. You're welcome. Both. Goes both ways.